Good evening. I'd like to open the meeting of the Deerfield Planning Board, February 5th, 2018. So that's the first correction. Um, at 610 here at the town offices. Our agenda tonight is that uh, we'll review some minutes from the previous meetings, review some mail, and then we want to jump right into a public comment period. And tonight's subject for public comment is marijuana. This is a continuation of last month's opportunity for the planning board to hear from Deerfield residents and others regarding potential town bylaws and regulations for the cultivation, processing, and sale of marijuana in Deerfield in advance of legalization of marijuana in Massachusetts. Then we want to draft some proposed bylaws for cultivation, processing, and sale of marijuana in Deerfield and then schedule a public hearing. Then we'll take any new business. Uh, we want to talk about our annual report. Then we'll talk about any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. Do planning board members have any other things for the agenda? <coughs> and I should say that we have um, six out of seven of the planning board members are present and we actually have name tags so you can know who we are. All right, if you just give us a, a few minutes um, to look at the minutes from the last meeting, which actually had to do with this subject. So. As a look. It's good with me. Does Arjun have I, a last name? I have a little, there's a quote from me about yeah. all the money going to the police and it's the ambulance and, uh, and the quality of life. It was more than that because when we did the medical marijuana, it wasn't supposed to tax any of our services that existed. They wanted it in one location. And that's what I was more concerned with mm -hmm. because now all of a sudden, anything that does get raised from that tax or whatever you want to call it is going to go to those two things. But they so said that... Just, so can I just so go ahead. strike that sentence from the minutes? Well, I mean, either just, add to it or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it was a comment. It wasn't a, um, there's no vote or anything on it. Yeah. Um, do you want to put a period? Well, how, what do you, what do you, you, cross you it out or whatever you want to do, but that no, wasn't, not, the, that no, wasn't like not the whole statement. That's okay, all. Okay. No, I know. I, I know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not yelling at you. I'm no, just no, no. clarifying things. But do you want it? Do you want, you can rewrite it. You can do whatever you want, Paul. If you want to strike it, strike it. If you want to add to it, that's fine with me. Okay. I'm, it's not my decision, but. What would you like to add to it, Roger? What would you like to add? That at one time it wasn't going to tax any of our resources, our existing resources in the community, then all of a sudden the money has to go to those two entities to make them function properly because it's going to create issues in our community. Okay, so we won't edit this sentence. I'm sorry, John, what did you say? I mean, we're just doing the minutes. We just want to edit the sentence. Okay. Or, or So your, your yeah. concern was that there was... Tell me again one more time so I can rewrite it. Well, and no, no, it just... just you can't bring up a new subject. We just want to say we're not bringing about up the quality of life relative to services. Yeah, is that what you mean? Make it just yeah. shorter. Okay, so repeat that for me, Rachel. Well, can you just say the quality of life relative to 
services. To town services? To town services. <coughs> To town kind of vague services. in general, but it about the quality of life in. It would, it, at one point in time, it was stated that medical marijuana would not affect any of our existing services. So you were concerned right. about the effect on our town services. Yep, and obviously, if those two things go up, it is going to affect the quality of our life. Okay, let me just say this. Roger Shadowski is concerned that the effect that, that um, is concerned about the effect on the quality of life and, on the, and the town services. Why don't you write it down there for me, Roger, what you're saying? I will. Well, right, right, but it's, right, no, yeah. Paul, that's just, what minute. He can't, he can't, he can't okay. make up something new. It's whatever you, it's not, the, you took the minutes and. Um, well, that, that's what I got from what he said, but I could be wrong. So I'm well, now we're just right so we're just adding the ending of it and say, Roger said he's concerned about the quality of life in Deerfield relative to town services. Relative to town services, is that okay? And then tonight he Fine. can elaborate on that if he wants. But really, well, we're just trying to get. Well, I elaborated on it once, John. All right. Anything else in the minute? Yeah, I'd like to. Uh, since I was mentioned, I. I where it says would like not to have money as the incentive for the zoning bylaw. I believe what I said was um, I would like not to fund an economy on addiction. That was actually the quote. So if you could change that, Paul. John Browns would like not to fund an economy on addiction. To fund our economy on Addiction. As an incentive for this, does that have anything to do with the zoning bylaw? Uh, yeah, it does. But why don't you just make it shorter that way or not? Because it's more than that. It's not just an incentive for zoning bylaw. Yeah. In general. How about if I move to uh, oh, accept no, the minutes as amended yeah. of January 8th, 2018? Second? I'll second it. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, uh, abstain. All right, six zero. Six zero zero. zero. Yep. Okay. All right, and then the mail, we can probably do that afterwards. We often do that afterwards. All right, so now we get to the public comment part. So every meeting we have a public comment, and often we don't have many people who want to talk about anything. But uh, tonight we have as the subject of marijuana. So as we said, it's going to continue from last month. And we made some progress, I think, last month. And tonight we have some people to help us. So our town council um, is here, as well as a representative from the FERCOB who has helped us at, uh, with some zoning bylaw issues before. So I'd actually like um, Adam to come up and kind of kick us off here. But b before, um, before he does, I just want to say that some observations about our last meeting is that this tends to, every, a lot of people have opinions about this. We're the planning board. We're looking at bylaws. And I would just ask that everybody, you know, people can express their, their opinions, but if it gets some, um, we don't want to get things too personal. And I would ask everybody to please respect each other um, and anybody who's speaking. And because this is televised and we do want more people to be able to, in, in town, participate in it, we would ask that people come up to the microphones to say their, um, to, to state their, uh, to make their statements. And I know that last time it was more of a conversation. I still hope we get a conversation. This is an informal meeting. It's not a public hearing. But we do want other people to hear what we have to say. So if you'd come up to the microphones when you get a chance. And I'll try to keep it moving, ask people to keep their comments brief when possible. So. Adam, uh, you want to kick us off? And you've done this around the state for a while, so you might add some uh, what you've learned there, too. I will. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. You know me. I'm Adam Costa. I'm with the firm of me, Tellerman, and Costa. We're your town council. We're town council in 15 other communities across Massachusetts. So as the chairman said, we've uh, experienced uh, what you're experiencing now and many of our other communities as well. Uh, all 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts have been faced with these same questions about how do we zone for first medical marijuana and now for recreational marijuana? 
Um, as you know, question four passed on the 2016, uh, November 2016 ballot, and as a consequence, uh, it set in motion a process whereby recreational marijuana will become lawful in Massachusetts. It technically has become lawful already, but there's a process for the purpose of uh, permitting, licensing these facilities, and um, it's a, a multi-step process which began with the legislation, which was later amended through the legislature, and now the process is underway to promulgate regulations. Draft regulations were just released uh, a few weeks ago and are in the process of being finalized. There's actually a series of public hearings this week and next week, which will result in those regulations being finalized no later than March 15th. Uh, and then, of course, the licensing process will begin with the first licenses to issue this summer. So um, my understanding of the process that is now underway in Deerfield, and I'll, I'll credit you for having uh, really gotten involved early on. I had discussions with your uh, building commissioner back probably 15 months ago, um, maybe just, just shy of that, 13, 14 months ago, just after the legislation was adopted on the state level, we talked about um, how to potentially zone for uh, recreational marijuana and specifically for cultivation and processing. At that time, the discussion was not about retail sales. And so you, you've probably seen a version of a document that's been floating around. It's a relatively simple document, just a couple of pages. It's something that I had drafted at the request of the building commissioner, uh, entitled Zoning Amendment Mar uh, Marijuana Cultivation and Processing Facilities. And the objective here was to very simply allow for these cultivation and processing facilities in certain locations in Deerfield by way of a special permit process. The objective here was not to identify the various types of marijuana establishments, everything from processing to testing to uh, indoor and outdoor uh, to uh, retail sales to marijuana cafes. That was not the objective of this article. The sole purpose of this article was to allow for processing and cultivation on limited sites in certain locations within the town of Deerfield. Uh, I understand that there has been uh, further conversations that have been had in town and before this board over the course of the past many months and specifically of late. Uh, and there have been discussions not just about the possibility of cultivation and processing, but also about some of these other models that have been adopted in other communities. I know one that I've heard references to within the past couple of weeks has been the Montague model, which is a more extensive model certainly than what I had drafted back 15 months ago and really Part of the reason it's more extensive is because it, um, it, it cites to some of the terminology that is being used in the new, le new legislation and specifically in the new regulations. Again, distinguishing between types of uh, cultivation and processing facilities, indoor and outdoor, distinguishing between those facilities and testing facilities, uh, speaking to retail sales, speaking to um, the, these, uh, these uh, locations where um, the product can be consumed, marijuana cafes for lack of a better term. So um, that's a more extensive approach to zoning, but it is an all-in approach in the sense that you're, you're covering the topic from start to finish, and there's certainly something to be said for that. So I think, again, the purpose of these meetings, as I understand it, is to take public input on the various uh, uh, opinions that uh, members of the public have concerning these types of facilities, whether they want them or don't want them, where they might want to see them, uh, and then engage, to engage in the zoning process where we look not only at what I drafted 15 months ago, but at some of these models from other communities and decide the approach that Deerfield wants to take to allowing or disallowing these facilities in certain locations. Um, you probably know, and I, maybe I should have started with this, but I, I presume that you've had the discussion or at least you've been made aware that the, the legislation is quite clear, that municipal authority is limited with respect to uh, allowance or disallowance of these sorts of facilities. As a community that voted yes back in November of 2016, as most did in Massachusetts, you've got to go to, through a two-step process if you were to opt to um, disallow these facilities on a town-wide basis or limit the number of these facilities. You would need to first adopt a bylaw, generally it's a general bylaw paired with a zoning bylaw, but then you'd also need to go the route of a referendum question to get the public to vote in favor of banning these facilities. Um, some communities have taken that approach. I will say that most have not. Most have said we want to zone it the way that we zone other sorts of facilities, other sorts of uses in our community, and they've decided where these sorts of facilities would be appropriate in terms of specific districts. Some communities have adopted overlay districts if they don't feel that they have in place uh, an appropriate zoning scheme to allow these uses in their existing districts. And then they've submitted uh, them to a certain process. Typically it's a site plan review or a special permit process because your board and other boards in town are already familiar with that process and so there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Um, who you designate as the site plan review authority or the special permit granting authority is 
sort of up to you. Some communities have opted to make the planning board that authority because often your planning board will issue site plan approvals more than others would. Um, other communities have created new boards or have opted to designate their selectmen as the uh, site plan review or special permit granting authority. So again, these are the sorts of questions that need to be asked and uh, the sorts of questions on which you need to take public input and ultimately arrive at a recommendation yourselves. And you can provide that feedback to me, provide that fee feedback to um, uh, the other consultants who are assisting um, on this project and we will work to craft whatever type of uh, zoning or general bylaws you ask us to craft and then of course there's the usual adoption process that needs to be followed where ultimately those will be presented to town meeting for a vote. With that, unless anybody has any questions, certainly I'm not going anywhere. So I understand you're going to take some public comment, but if you have questions now or through the process, certainly feel free to ask. I'm happy to, to help out where I can. So I have a few of the framing questions maybe, but anybody else? What, um, so the question is, what, what if the town, what if we did nothing as far as zoning goes? What, what does that look like? Sure. Because we, and I should just let, let everybody know. So the town has these zoning bylaws and they're based on areas, zones, uh, residential, agriculture, center village, commercial, industrial. And then under those, there's the different types of businesses. And so if someone comes in and wants to put in a business, we go look at this and we say, well, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a automatic, it can go in these zones, it can't go in these zones, or it needs a special permit in these other zones. Right now, there's nothing in our zoning that says anything about marijuana. So that, therefore, it's not listed as a use. So if we didn't do anything, what would, what would, that, uh, what would the result be? Sure. So the usual... The, the usual answer to that question with respect to uses that aren't specifically identified in your zoning bylaw is if they're not identified, they're prohibited. In fact, I believe you have a statement in your zoning bylaw that uh, a former partner of mine might have added when it was recodified a decade or more ago that says any use that is not specifically identified herein shall be deemed prohibited. That's standard language in most zoning bylaws in Massachusetts. However, the exception to that rule is the types of uses that are protected either by statute or by special legislation. So for example, you couldn't prohibit churches or educational institutions because they're subject to protection under the Dover Amendment in Massachusetts. So even if you didn't list those in your zoning bylaw, they would be deemed allowed in every district by virtue of the fact that they're subject to protection under Massachusetts state law. <laughs> Similarly, although not subject to that same particular statute, marijuana uh, establishments per special legislation now um, have been allowed in Massachusetts communities. So if you didn't specifically take action to prohibit them through that process of adopting an appropriate bylaw and then um, submitting the question to a referendum vote, and you also chose not to zone them into particular districts, they would be allowed. And we'd, we'd have to look more closely at your zoning bylaw to see whether an argument could be made that they would be allowed only in certain districts, maybe as a subcategory of other sorts of manufacturing or industrial type uses or other types of retail sales, or an argument could well be made that they're allowed in any district. But you couldn't, by virtue of doing nothing, prohibit them because there's this very specific process that the legislature has established if you wish to prohibit them and you wouldn't have followed that process. For the same reason, you have to sort of be mindful about how you zone them. And I didn't want to state this originally because I, I assume that we'll get into this discussion as the, as, as the night um, goes on. But you got to be careful in terms of determining where these sorts of facilities can be allowed because you also can't essentially enact a de facto prohibition on the use. So I've had communities say, well, we'll allow it in one district, which happens to be the smallest district in our town. It's comprised of 25 parcels. All these parcels are an acre, and we're going to allow it on parcels of five acres or more um, and that are currently undeveloped, and 75% of these are already developed. And so we have, in essence, prohibited the use. The legislature will see through that. That's not allowed. Could you briefly explain, given what you just said, the difference between marijuana and medical marijuana? Sure. So, which just to remind people, we did, we did create zones for medical well, marijuana was going a year ago. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, the medical marijuana legislation, as you know, passed a number of years ago, legalizing it here in the Commonwealth. And so many municipalities adopted either medical marijuana zoning or overlay districts within which these sorts of facilities could be, uh, could be developed, whether they be uh, facilities for the cultivation uh, of, of medical marijuana or for um, the actual dispensing of the marijuana itself. 
Um, the terminology they used was medical marijuana treatment centers, MMTCs were the terminology that was often used. RMDs, registered marijuana dispensaries, is another term that is used in that original legislation. The new legislation essentially shifts the responsibility for the oversight of that program from the Department um, uh, of Public Health over to the new Cannabis Control Commission, the CCC, which was uh, established under the new legislation. They're the ones who have recently adopted these draft regulations that are due to be finalized by mid-March. So the terminology that's used, what many communities have done, Montague's a good example, it uses the term marijuana establishment. Well, under the new legislation, marijuana establishment is an all-encompassing term. It includes not only these facilities that would be cultivating or dispensing recreational marijuana, but also those that would be cultivating or dispensing medical marijuana. So it's all inclusive. It includes those uh, registered marijuana dispensaries or medical marijuana treatment centers within the umbrella of marijuana establishments. And that's why you see, for example, in the Montague model that they have essentially said, in that instance, they're going to delete in its entirety the provisions of their zoning that address registered marijuana dispensaries and replace it with this whole new scheme that is all-encompassing, including both medical and recreational. So since Deerfield already has a medical marijuana district or overlay, if you will, we have done something, so it isn't like we're doing nothing. Would that be correct? If it, it would be in the sense that you've zoned for medical marijuana. The, um, the legislature isn't going to deem you to have satisfied the uh, legislative edict, for lack of a better term, via the, the November 2016 vote that, that legalized recreational marijuana simply because you're allowing medical marijuana there. Although the term marijuana establishment is all encompassing, you can't just allow medical and have satisfied the requirements under the new legislation. If it was all encompassing, why, why do they differentiate? Because within the legislation itself, it differentiates between medical and recreational. But for purposes of regulating it in many respects, it uses that general term. Okay. And then another question that came up last month was the, um, the federal um, laws regarding marijuana. How, how does that play into it? And is it it's kind of a moving target, I think? But. Um, it is, and uh, that's, I think, probably the best way to characterize it. There are many challenges that exist with uh, marijuana uh, legalization and uh, with the regulating of marijuana on a municipal basis. Um, marijuana is a, is a, 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 it's unlawful under federal law. It's lawful here in Massachusetts as it is in a number of other states. There have been questions about what actions the federal government could take against municipalities. Um, the answer to that question is we don't know. Um, all indications are there have been communities in other states that have, um, in other states themselves, that have legalized recreational marijuana prior to Massachusetts doing so. There have been no actions taken by the federal government against those states or against those municipalities as a consequence of their efforts to legalize it. Um, but there are practical challenges that exist as well. Um, I've had conversations with, um, with uh, business owners, with um, banking institutions about the challenges that exist getting financing for these sorts of facilities because of the fact that many banks don't want to touch them um, because of the, the, the uh, challenges that exist on a federal level with respect to providing funds, uh, lending funds for the purpose of developing these sorts of facilities. So there are some challenges that exist. It's a moving target in many respects. And, Massachusetts, as has been the case, you know, in, in many areas of the law, is sort of on the forefront here, one of the very few states that have legalized this. So just um, having, having said that, does that preclude us from doing anything, or we should still move ahead and do planning and bylaw development? So our recommendation to the municipalities that we represent, and I think it's consistent across the industry, because I, of course, speak regularly with other town councils and other communities, is that we recommend to our communities that they be proactive and they zone for for they either be proactive and zone for recreational marijuana, or if it is the desire of the community, they can take steps to prohibit it on a townwide basis. That is always an option. Um, but we do act. We do advocate for a 
proactive approach because doing nothing puts you in the position that I described before. It doesn't exempt you from the law. The law still applies. The law still requires you to allow for these facilities because, again, the legislature has spoken on the state level and notwithstanding the concerns that might exist with respect to, um, to, to the federal government and what action it could possibly take, you're still bound by, um, by the legislative action that was taken back in 2016 and then more recently modified, amended. Great. So when you say that, and this, this opt-out, and you're talking you know, two steps, first to zone, create a bylaw, create bylaws that would uh, regulate the uh, cultivation and processing at very least, right? Particularly the cultivation and processing, not necessarily retail in every town. Is that, is that the case? I'm not clear on that. Sure. So, so maybe I can be a bit clearer in how I explained it. So municipalities have two options with mm -hmm. respect to recreational marijuana. Mm -hmm. They can either choose to embark upon a path where they would ultimately prohibit facilities within their communities. Mm -hmm. To do that, you need to begin with a bylaw. It's a relatively simple bylaw. It says that the facilities are prohibited. Okay. Um, and that would be joined with the need for a referendum, a referendum vote if you're in a I community see. that voted yes. If you're in a community that voted no, you can actually just adopt the bylaw and, and you're done. And you go. Right, right, right. That doesn't apply here. Right. So you'd have to go through that two-step process. Right. That's option A. Right. Option B is to say we're simply going to zone for it. Yeah. We're not going to go the route of attempting to prohibit it in our community, either because you believe there are benefits to it, because you don't believe you can get the vote right. to prohibit it. Right. Right. And if you go that route, then you would want to uh, engage in a more comprehensive zoning approach, something like what Montague has done. And that's not the only, op that's not the only option right. that's out there in terms of zoning approaches. I mentioned before you can create overlay districts. You can, um, you, you can rely on other aspects of your existing zoning to try to craft um, zoning provisions that would allow for these sorts of facilities where you deem them appropriate. But it's a more comprehensive zoning approach because you're providing a process for these sorts of facilities to be permitted in certain districts, in certain locations, within an overlay district, right. and you're differentiating between the different types of facilities that exist. Let me also um, go down that path, of the opt-out path. So you make as a, a board or as a, at a town meeting and you, you zone no, no place in this town um, and then you bring it to a referendum and it doesn't pass. You're back to square one. That's correct. Okay. And then you're, are you vulnerable in that regard? Or how vulnerable would, be the, would the municipality be at that point? If, if You're in the same position that you'd be in if you, actually, if you took absolutely no action today. Right. If you didn't zone for it. Yeah. Okay. Which means there's no prohibition in place and there's no regulation of it. No so regulation in place as well. Right, right, that's right. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Any other clarifying questions? Or? All right. Thanks very much. And again, I'm not going anywhere, so yeah. if you've got further questions, let me <laughs> yeah, Thank you. I'm sure we'll <laughs> have things for you. Um, and I, I would like to recognize we have uh, actually three of our three select board members here tonight, and I know this has been discussed at select board meetings, so I was wondering if we could uh, maybe get, is there a summary or something we could get from the select board maybe to help us uh, so we're not just repeating, repeating things? Um, Carolyn Ness. Carolyn Ness, um, Chair uh, of the Board of Health and um, Board of Selectmen at the moment. I have been involved with this with Dick since this first came out as medical marijuana. And the whole idea was to be proactive. We have an overlay district. Um, our intention is to use that as um, the restrict for recreational um, outlets and um, you know, adopt the 3% local sales tax and, and um, hopefully have cultivation in our residential agricultural area. And the reason why is to um, make sure that we have protection, that we just don't have it randomly popping up all over town. And the idea is to only allow one retail outlet for recreational. Um, it's 20% of your liquor licenses so we are okay with one and um, just regulate it as best we can and protect our community. Um, it's coming. So, um, and the whole idea is to account for every single cost so it is not subsidized by the taxpayers at all and to be as proactive as possible. Um, we, Dick and I have gone to several meetings over the course of the last three or four years. We've tried to stay on top of this I have every intention after um, going to the Homeland Security meeting tomorrow morning to run up to the FERCOG to make sure that um, 
you know, I've attend the public hearing that the Cannabis Commission is, is having. Um, but the fact is, we, you know, someone applies for a license, it's going to happen. So it's up to us to be proactive and to control it as best we can. And so it has, um, you know, mitigate any negative um, impacts to the community and make sure that they are as positive as possible. Great. Have you had any, pub you haven't had a public hearing at, at the select board at all, right? No, okay. no, it's, we're, we're going through the planning board, uh, um, you know. Good. All right, that's good. You know. Uh, All right, and the uh, meeting tomorrow that she's referring to is at the FERCOG. It's a public hearing of the Cannabis Control Commission, right? At 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock at the uh, John Olver building there, the, the FERCOG office. So, by, you know, everybody's encouraged to go to those. Uh, and the idea is, you. again, just to be as proactive as possible, make sure we have positive impact and um, that we have control. Thanks. Can and I ask one question um, sure. just relative to retail and uh, product? Because uh, that was one of the FERCOG's um, concerns was about edible consumption. You know, that edibles are a major issue relative to availability to broader well, spectrum. Well, I, I, I think that that's one reason it's so important that we have it's regulations important. because, um, you know, our health agent would do the inspections yeah. and all amounts of what's in the whatever edible it is yeah, 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 is yeah. is very concise yeah. and is measured and is you know protects the consumer because obviously if you have all these random things happening with no control um, the the amounts of whatever is in it it can be very much very mm -hmm. very and impact people tremendously mm -hmm. so um, the idea is to have uh, legitimate, good, whoever it is, apply to the license, the one license that we're willing to give out, and, um, and that we have a good relationship with that person to make sure, or that company, to make sure that we um, absolutely control everything. Thank you. So at the end of our last month, we talked about the planning board sort of was looking into three options. One, the opt-out option. The other is to update a draft of the bylaws. And then another is a potential moratorium. Um, so I guess largely being the planning board, we're interested in, in zoning. And we have kind of broke this up into zoning of cultivation um, versus retail. And that seemed to be the major subject last meeting. So I guess anybody have any comments about um, uh, cultivation? of marijuana and how we could zone for that. Are you separating it from processing? Or are you? Well, I guess that gets back to, to a question, but there is all the definitions of what is, um, is cultivation and processing go together? Adam, is that something we're clear about? Or, or we have some other experts in the room, too. So it depends upon how you craft your zoning. When I prepared the draft, again, this was prior to the Cannabis Control Commission's draft regulations that were released of late. When I prepared the draft 14, 15 months ago, um, I had sort of lumped those terms together because that was um, the instruction that was given to me at the time, that there was a desire to zone for um, both the cultivation and ultimately the processing uh, of recreational marijuana in Deerfield. Um, based upon the recently issued regulations yet to be finalized, um, you can certainly distinguish between those. And I think I have a copy of the Montague model. I believe that it, it does exactly that. It speaks to um, marijuana cultivation, product manufacture as a separate, a separate entry in the uh, table of use regulations, in addition to transportation research, et cetera. So it gets quite specific in terms of the, the different uses. All right, and we, we have a, a couple copies of the, of the draft Cannabis Control Commission um, regulations here too. They separated by marijuana cultivation and then marijuana product manufacturers, then storefront and delivery retail sale, and then social consumption. And that, that's how the way that they're uh, right, and that, that's how the Montague model divides yeah. it up too. I mean, most of these models I've seen are are referencing the terminology as you should that's used in in the statute or the regulations. You yeah. should mimic that. That would be my recommendation. Um, again, um, 
not having that clarity back 14, 15 months ago, we had used, utilized the terms together. Right. Um, if you're going to take a more um, holistic sure. approach to this yeah, based upon um, the, the recently uh, issued draft regulations, then I would recommend that they um, they be separated out if you, if you indeed wish to um, regulate them differently. There's no need to necessarily separate them out if you're going to allow both of those uses in all of the same districts. Um, Again, you can use the terminology, but you could lump them into one entry in your table of use regulations. All right. I've got a question. I've been reading in the papers, there have been a lot of issues, and some communities are drafting zoning regulations. Some are, take, are using the approach of a moratorium to see how things are going to play out, and some are trying to ban it. Right. So now we'll say we went with a moratorium and it passed, someone comes in to apply for a permit. We really have no regulations, we just have a hold on it. So what would happen? Well, that's the purpose of the moratorium. They couldn't make, I suppose anybody can walk in and hand an application right. to the town, but the application isn't received by the town. There, there's no right to right. develop a facility. So they the couldn't go forward, they couldn't. That, that's correct. So, so moratoria have been used, I mean, historically for all types, of, all types of uses. You've got moratorium that are related to the rate of growth in communities that have seen uh, exponential rates of growth and have been concerned and need to get a handle on how they can manage that growth in their community. They've adopted rate of development bylaws and they've initially done so through a moratorium. Uh, we saw attempted moratoria on cell towers, which many of which were, were stricken down because of the Federal Telecommunications Act. But they, they've, there's been an effort to use these moratoria to regulate um, newer subjects to the area of zoning. Um, but what the courts have consistently said when they've reviewed the legitimacy of these moratoria is that you need to be sure that there's a public planning process that is the rationale for requiring the moratorium and that is being undertaken while the moratorium is in effect. And so that's how you justify the need for it. We're not prepared at present to address this issue. Um, it, it's it's a, a new issue of, of law. We need 12 months, 15 months, 18 months to give us the opportunity to do so. And so we're adopting the moratorium. But at the end of that 12, 15, 18 months, so you're expected to, to be ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, and the courts have stricken down moratoria that have been for too lengthy a period. Those that have tried to be renewed after an initial term because there has been no evidence that that public planning process has been underway. You just need to be sure that you've got the justification for it and then you, that you follow through. So if we chose to present all three of those options to our voters, because obviously I voted in favor at one time, and as time played along, I've learned different things. So maybe I've changed my opinion, and maybe the voters in Deerfield have also. So say we give them all three options, they pick one, and we go down that route and we zone for recreation marijuana, or they choose to the moratorium or opt out. So then we go to uh, the phases that we have to. There's quite a process, it sounds like, if you ban it completely. So would we be vulnerable if we were in that process? Uh, while you're in the process, yes. I mean, remember that there are no licenses being issued until this summer. So if, if the objective here is to um, proceed with the process you just described and to do so in time for your annual town meeting, then you will have taken action prior to licensing licenses issuing. Um, you could certainly go the route that you just described. I will say that there are some complexities involved in giving that many options to the voters. And I, I'm, I'm entirely in favor of giving options to the voters. Yeah. Um, but the idea behind pursuing a, a bylaw that would, a zoning bylaw that would regulate in the manner that we're discussing, something like the Montague model, for example, while sim simultaneously pursuing an outright prohibition, which is done by bylaw and then by subsequent yeah. referendum vote, um, You've got to, well, while well, simultaneously pursuing a moratorium, you're talking about three separate warrant articles. You've got to structure those such that they can't all three pass. Well, right. So you've got to structure them such that they're um, in an appropriate sequence on the town meeting warrant so that if the first one passes, that you're passing over the next two or indefinitely postponing them. It can get quite challenging. I will say that I've not had many communities attempt to do all three. But wouldn't it sort of be like when you have one seat and there's three candidates that run for that one seat? you would just make it that you choose vote for one of these options. And so obviously there'd be a, a winner or a loser or whatever. I, I, I understand the approach. Um, yeah. 
it's obviously a bit more complicated when you're talking about crafting bylaws to address each yeah. of these, these circumstances oh, I'm sure and preparing, it easy, but preparing I'm saying, for a referendum vote. Yes. So that's, that's the challenge. Interesting. Thanks. We, uh, I see we have someone who wants to speak. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my name is Dick Evans. I'm a lawyer in Northampton, and uh, I was uh, chair of the Yes on 4 campaign in, 19, in 2016. And I'm, I'm here in two capacities. One is just a neighbor of the town, and eager to see you guys do the right thing. And the other is I'm eager to see uh, uh, Pioneer Gardens uh, uh, being zoned in such a way that they, they could convert to a cultivation operation. Uh, I wanted to answer your question about processing. Under the formal definition of, of uh, cultivation that's in both the statute and the regulations, processing is part of cultivating. cultivating. So you would be zoning for cultivation, you'd be zoning for product manufacture, and zoning for retail. Those are really the three uses of land, marijuana-related uses of land, uh, that you'd need to uh, uh, assign zoning districts to. You know, it's really a question of filling in boxes and putting a PA or SPD or yes or no or whatever it is in the various boxes. That's how you would zone for each of those activities. So they're separate. You're, you're saying the cultivation and the creation of product. Yes, it's cultivation, manufacture, and retail, separate, totally separate. But but you say cultivation and processing, so it's the it's the. Uh, they go together. Right, but the processing is different than product manufacturing. That's right, because right? that's a word that yeah. people might get. That's right. But they're in this book at two different levels. Of cultivation and processing are inex inextricable. <laughs> yeah. And manufacture, and retail are two other product categories. Could you explain processing? Uh, yeah, uh, harvesting, bundling, packaging, you know, uh, in bulk. That's all it is. Product manufacturing is the one. So that it's that really the primary, primary level of processing, not the right. product development. Yeah. So yeah. product manufacturing is a whole other, that's a whole other step. Whole other step. Lots of rules. Mm -hmm. And I'd point out that the CCC is really doing all the heavy lifting for you. They have developed all the, the rules, 107 pages of rules regarding security and vetting of applicants and, and so forth. And fortunately, you don't have to get into that at all. You just need to decide what can happen where. That's really your, your challenge, it seems to me. Thanks. I'd be happy to answer any other questions if you have. I'll be around for a while, too. All right. I must say that the last month, it did seem like there was some um, we were going, seemed like we were going in the direction of cultivation that we did want to zone. Um, we did want to make some decisions sort of on zoning for cultivation. That's why I kind of brought that up first to see if there was any other input on that. That we were considering um, residential agriculture as being, uh, and I should say that special permits. And so the, 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 the different um, ways we zone is sometimes we say that yes, we, and we say by right. That means if this type of business wants to go in this type of place, it's by right. They can just do it. Or we say no, they can't do it. Or we say special permit, which means they have to come to some some board, either the zoning board, the planning board, the select board, or something, to to sort of talk about what they're planning on doing. And then the the town has some parameters on what they might do, like they can only operate between seven and seven, or you know something like that. So that's a special permit. So I think everything we were talking about here regarding marijuana, we're probably going to put a special permit on it. Um, and that way the town does have more oversight. Someone can't just come in and do it without telling us what they're planning to do. So we were looking, I think, last month at um, making residential agriculture, uh, a, uh, putting a special permit for uh, cultivation of marijuana. So if that's, like, if everybody's in agreement, we should just know that now so we can kind of move forward. We can start drafting bylaws. So does that, anybody have a comment on that? I don't have a comment. I'd like to make a statement. Sure. Come on up. Get out of here. We're happy to have you all night, Paul. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, I'm here, Paul Olszewski, chairman of the Deerfield Industrial Park or the Deerfield Economic Development Industrial Corporation. Um, I just wanted to state so it was on public record. Understand that the, the Deerfield Industrial Park was, was built in the, mid, in the mid 70s during a very, an economic downturn. Uh, Jack Chesslin, the core people that built it, um, to fund that, federal and state money was taken to 
build that in a significant amount of money of, and I think it's most importantly to, to say uh, federal money taken to, to construct that which has benefited the town in many ways over the years. And I just wanted to say that while the park was placed in the, the Mar uh, marijuana medical overlay district uh, back a number of years ago, really when we were sort of dormant, uh, Jack was ill and, and, and the like, and now that we basically for the last four years have brought the park back to life in many ways, um, I just wanted to publicly make the planning board aware based on our rules and regulations for the Deerfield Industrial Park, which are, board, which are voted and approved uh, and distributed to the property owners and the tenants of the park, that under Chapter 2, uh, I want to say subsection B, occupant responsibilities, one of them, uh, there's a total of eight, and one that is very uh, glaring to us and, and stands out with this whole situation uh, because of the fact that uh, marijuana on a federal level is illegal, unlawful, whatever you want to call it, as a class D substance. So I state the re responsibilities of the occupants of the industrial park are as follows, and like I say, there's eight, of which the one that is number three, and I quote, to use every parcel in a manner that conforms with all federal, state, and local laws and regulations, including but not limited to laws relating to management of the solid waste, hazardous waste, air, and water quality, wetlands, wildlife protection, and so on. But it's, it's what the reason I'm here is to basically um, really hammer home the point that to use every parcel in a manner that conforms with all federal and state laws. So understand that while uh, anyone coming into the park or a current property owner or whatever came, comes to us, they have to bring their site, any, any kind of improvement, addition, um, what has to, has those site plans, all that has to first be approved by the board. And right now, it's, if we were to, you know, to, to have someone come in and say, I'm gonna take such and such parcel and I wanna turn it into manufacturing or, or distribution or a marijuana cafe or whatever, right there we would be very, say thank you very much, here are our bylaws, and say it's a federal, we have to, you have to comply with federal, you know, the federal and state and local laws, and obviously uh, marijuana being a, at this point, it has been, currently is, and until someone changes it, it still continues to be an unlawful substance as a Class D. So I just want to, um, just want to make uh, you aware that the, that the DDIC board, uh, this is our position. We are going to monitor this, um, but even though we are in the, the overlay district, and I understand that, and I understand why it was done, right. you know, to provide a, a, an area in town right. to do this kind of stuff, we have to stand by, as an edict, because we also report directly to the state, the Department of Housing and Community Development, and we're in contact with them, and we have our own council, and I just want to let it be known that while we are in the, in the overlay, we have to play by our rules. Which is, and I think the overlay calls it a special permit, so that's one of the things someone came forward and they wanted to do it there, you could pull this out well, and say, this, you know, you yeah, can't do it, so, yeah. But so, I, I just wanted to, you fine. know, the board right. asked me, I, we just wanted to have it on public record. Good. And, uh, however you guys meet, meter this thing out. Yeah, no, that's, help, that's helpful, thanks. John, can I have a question? Sure. For Adam, oh, I'm sorry, for Adam. Um, Carolyn spoke earlier about uh, the town having a position of only one license for the retail sale, and if I understood her correctly. How would that special permitting process, in your eyes, uh, go as far as the cultivation? If we have open up the town to, say, all of our agricultural area, uh, are the number of licenses there uh, permitted to be restricted, or is it just if we allow it, anybody can do it? So they, they are permitted to be restricted. Um, the, the rule of thumb here is if you subject these sorts of facilities to a special permit process, your special permit granting authority, whoever you might designate for the purpose of acting on these sorts of applications, mm -hmm. can exercise the same sort of discretion that they'd exercise for any other type of special permit applying the special permit criteria that are found in your bylaw. And if those criteria aren't satisfied, that authority has the full range of discretion available to it to deny or appropriately condition if it chooses to approve that particular project. The only 
thing that I cautioned you and I had said earlier would be a circumstance where the special permit granting authority were exercising that authority, um, that special permit authority so broadly and in such a way that it was just denying any application that came forth, essentially operating as a de facto denial of any kind of uh, facility within the town, uh, I think that would cause the legislature to raise an eyebrow and say, what's really occurring here? Um, but short of that, you know, yes. I also want to make it clear that we ought to distinguish between the zoning process, which is what we're here to discuss tonight, and a potential licensing process. So there's nothing in the legislation or even the newly uh, promulgated regulations in draft form that prohibits a municipality from adopting a local licensing process. Um, that's sort of separate and apart from the zoning question, how it's, how it's zoned, where it's zoned, the question of whether there's a local license required for it, again, that, that can be something that is dealt with separately, typically entirely apart from zoning, and in addition to whatever state process might exist. I, I will concur with what was said a moment ago um, by Attorney Evans, which is that the, the Cannabis Control Commission has very heavily regulated this subject. I mean, that's sort of a, um, a, a component of the Massachusetts legislation, maybe even more so than legislation that's been adopted in some other states, is that uh, th these substances are very heavily regulated. There are provisions of not only the, the statute, but also now the regulations that deal with everything uh, from the testing of these products to the types of products that can be manufactured to the security of these sorts of facilities to inspections. Uh, it's all within the state, re uh, state regulations. And, and I, I understand that, but where I was thinking, where I was going with my thoughts, and if we open the town up to the cultivation in all of our agriculture areas, and then we also decide that we're going to, say, limit it to, to one license or permit, if you will, how does it, what position does it put the town in if we have three people all, you know, bidding for this one license? We can't necessarily have a hearing on one without discriminating on the other. Do you hear them all three at the same time, or do you just accept the applications and review them independently and then choose one? From a zoning perspective, you need to review each of them on their merits. And of course, you run the risk, therefore, that multiple applications meet the special permit criteria and ought to be, applied, ought to be approved by, by the special permit granting authority. I would argue that insofar as the intent of the town is only to permit a single facility, and it believes that that will will uh, satisfy its obligations under the, under the legislation, that it do so through the licensing process and not through the zoning, zoning. process. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions for Paul about industrial plan, industrial parking? Okay. Oh, thanks. Good to meet you. Thanks. Good to meet you. Um, Thank you. Thanks. So again, I talk about um, cultivation. And, and again, cultivation isn't just in the farm fields and that's why we had for the medical marijuana we said it was permitted permissible in the industrial park because people can do this indoors as well um, but any any other thoughts on for zoning making residential agriculture a special permit in terms of marijuana cultivation and processing I'm against it do you want to speak that to was that a comment Okay, you want to speak to it? I don't think that cultivating or selling marijuana is a suitable or a reasonable use for residential agricultural property. Anything else? Well, we've addressed marijuana cultivation and uh, sales with medical marijuana and decided then that medical marijuana was was suitable in industrial uh, zoned areas because of its the nature of its security and the type of facilities that you would need to uh, cultivate it in a secure you know manner and uh, I just don't think that residential agricultural is suitable it you know, that what you're going to have to do to secure it is going to infringe on the, its neighbors. Any other comments? As, as several people have referred to the regulations, they, they take care of all of the security issues, so we don't, as a town, have to. Mm -hmm. And it might, as this part of the special permit, it would obviously make some places probably not appropriate for it, but mm -hmm. that's not something we have wow. to I wonder if get into. the state has addressed that. 
like Adam referred to fields and stuff, are they going to let it be allowed to grow in an open field with no type of security around it, whatever? No. That's in the 177 billion. <laughs> so there is a reference to outdoor cultivation, um, but to answer your direct question, no, not without any security around it. There are security provisions that need to be satisfied in not only the, the statute, but then, of course, expounded upon in the, the newly promulgated regulations. Um, I would agree with the chairman's comment that the regulations are extensive. Um, what most communities have done, and there are a few, even dating back to the medical marijuana legislation, which was also quite comprehensive, and the medical marijuana uh, regulations also provided for security provisions. I saw some communities when they adopted overlay districts, when they adopted zoning for medical marijuana, they would typically include, and it's what I included here in the version of zoning that I had proposed 12 or 15 months ago, I had included a provision to the effect that the facility shall be fully in compliance with the, the applicable statute and regulations and, you know, all, all provisions there under relative to security and, and, and testing, et cetera. Um, most communities have done that with, with medical, and then some saw fit to include additional requirements if they felt it was important. Um, you know, 24-hour uh, contact information shall be provided to the chief of police in the event of emergency, things like that, that were maybe specific to the town that were not already incorporated within um, the, the state regulations. But generally, you would want to include in whatever zoning you adopt an explicit reference to the, the state regulations and a requirement that there be full compliance. So do you have any idea what it takes to make an open field secure? That's, I guess, the question I was asking you. Uh, I, could, I could walk through the regulations, but I can't, okay. off the top of my head, I can't give you the specifics as to okay. the requirements, but they, they go on for pages in terms of what exactly is well, required Well, I know they're security. probably lengthy, but yes. I just wondered if it was a building, uh, fences, what, whatever. Enclosure, yes. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else want to yeah. answer that? Right. Mr. Chairman, I could read off to you what those requirements are. While he was talking, I was able to page through to that section. So this is the security and alarm requirements for marijuana establishments operating at an open cultivation facility, and that's distinguished from an enclosed one. It requires perimeter security fence designed to prevent unauthorized entry, commercial grade non-residential locks, a security alarm system that's continuously monitored, provides alerts to designated employees within five minutes. Um, they also require video cameras at all points of entry and exit and in any parking lot. It's appropriate for normal lighting commissions. Cameras have to be angled a certain way. Um, there has to be 24-hour uh, recordings from all cameras, a lot of, it, a lot of uh, detail here about the availability of those recordings and how long they're kept and so forth. Um, access to surveillance areas are limited, all security equipment in good working order, security plans and procedures shared with local law enforcement. So as uh, Mr. Costa said, very extensive requirements here already written out for you in these draft regulations. Thank you. Starts on page 73. What page? Flip through it there. Page 70. In the 177. Or 72, 73, 74 of the 177 page document. Any other? Comments? I just have a question. Um, I guess one of my questions is, um, Carolyn said that it was 20% of the liquor stores, you know, so 20% so we could have one. But <clears throat> the question is, is, you know, is it going to be a liquor's 44 or something small? So I would assume the licensing would affect the size of the space, the size of the farm or the cultivation area. It's not... You know, it's, we might have one, but it's not necessarily going to be, you know, acres and acres and acres and acres. It could be a small. I, I was this, referring to retail outlets. Oh, okay, retail outlets. Yeah, we, you, the state um, allows us to limit them to 20% yep. of our liquor licenses, so we, that means we can have one. I mean, we can have right. more. Okay. We only have to allow but, one, and we've met the requirement for retail. Right. But I guess. And the question is about the size. It could be the smaller. The size or it could of be a the facility, the um, growing right. facility. I mean, part of the that's part of the licensure, yeah. and right. that's where we have the special permit to oversee that. Yeah. Um, 
And so I would say what you were saying in terms of the special permit and the residential agriculture, that seems to make sense to me, what the chairman said. And I, you know, again, just the special permit, it looks at, um, it consults with all town officers and departments, including police, fire, health. So that's all part of the special permitting. It has to get the, the kind of approval from everybody. Um, in general, what the special permit does, it, uh, it tries to determine that the benefits of the proposed use outweigh its detrimental impacts on the town and the neighborhood. That's in sort of the, the general concept of special permits. So we check with everybody. There is also a um, special permits need to have all the neighbors are notified, right, Pat? Yes. Yeah. You know, so, no, so nothing's going to... All 300 foot of butters. 300 foot of butters. So nothing just pops up um, when there's a special permit involved. So, thanks. Yep. Well, I just want to say one of the reasons that um, I feel it's so important to be proactive on this is because we have one of the best police departments, or the best police department in Franklin County. And from my seat on Homeland Security, I would say that's definitely one of the top of Western Mass. And, and so we want our police department to oversee the security. We don't want to um, inherit problems by having it like just over the line at the sugar loaf shops or something like that. We, we want to be able to control it and, and have our police department oversee um, the, all this kind of stuff. So it's very important to me that we be proactive so that they will be able to be the ones that um, and be making sure that the impacts are minimal to us as a community. And I'm sure Waitley will, will do the same as neighboring towns will too. <laughs> <laughs> I just had mine and then this one was here. So if someone wants to look through it. Yes, come on up. Yes, I'm Arian Friend with um, Pioneer Gardens, and I would like to um, um, recommend the planning board to vote or to make a recommendation in favor of opening up uh, cannabis production to agricultural um, companies, the farming community in town. Um, I believe that the farming community is, is the perfect industry to uh, take on the cannabis uh, business uh, because it's a perfect match in terms of our current know-how that we already have. Uh, there is like 95% of the know-how that we have in our industry matches what's required for cannabis production. Um, as you probably know, uh, we have had quite a few lean years in the farming industry in the past few years. Uh, this is also an opportunity for diversification uh, I can give you maybe some numbers. Uh, we grow as perennial, uh, we grow perennials uh, at Pioneer Gardens. That is a, a $2 billion industry. Uh, cannabis is not even legalized in every state. It's about, I believe, in 60% of the states, 80% of the, the U.S. population. So it's the majority. People, vo people have been voting in favor of it. Uh, it's an $8 billion industry already. So it's four times bigger than the perennials that we grow. And it's only grown in, uh, in certain states, and it's growing by leaps and bounds. So what does that mean? Uh, that means for the town of Deerfield, for example, uh, with a change of zoning, uh, immediate uh, direct investment, uh, capital investment in the town, it will mean well-paying jobs, which the farming community needs as well, uh, year-round full-time employment with good wages and benefits. Uh, that, uh, that certainly uh, will be uh, in a, a direct uh, result of changing the zoning law. I have no doubt about it. I think, for example, uh, in the airfield, it could mean, you know, it's a guess, but I think it's realistic that uh, when everything is in full swing, it could mean 100 additional jobs. I think it's very realistic. And also, don't, uh, don't forget, if we vote not in favor, we're not the only game in town. We got uh, 300 other towns in, in, in Massachusetts and they'll run with it. So we have nothing. So that's the other option. So, you know, the, the voters have voted and I think the choice is up to us to, uh, the way I see it, to basically go with the wishes of the voters and uh, make, make the best of it, make it happen. And 
Can I ask you a question? You talk, Absolutely. I think I've been wrapping my head so much around cultivating and processing, and now I'm thinking about product manufacturing. What? Because you, you'd have to. There's another step here that I'm, I'm missing, and I'm, I'm. Con I have concerns. I don't even have an, an idea for what that is, what that looks like. Do you have any sense for that? We would be the uh, cultivators. Right. Yeah. So then you go to, that's a whole new, I, 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 uh, I know we, you, we, uh, I see you, I trust you. The, the, the growing part of it, I feel like I get. Yeah. The, manu the product manufacturing, I, I, that to me is like, is very un, um, foreign. I don't. Right. That, that would be another company. That's a whole other. Uh, Pioneer Gardens is a uh, is a cultivator, is a grower. Yeah. Yeah. Not a manufacturer. You, but do you know anything about? Just I'm just asking you, since you must have d done more research on this than me, about what product manufacturing looks like. Who does that? Uh, I, I think it's a uh, high tech, uh, very uh, it's already getting well, very well regulated uh, uh, industry, comparable to the food industry. Right. So you For wouldn't example, do that at all? Yeah, no, that's not my inorganics, no. So who would you sell your product to? Yeah, that's... Um, You'd grow it, and then what? We sell it to the marketplace. Ultimately, the marketplace, what address is that? I'm just... Uh, we just don't know. But you would sell it, it right, now, right now. The, we yeah, just don't know yeah. who this, that is yet. You wouldn't sell that it to is missing. consumers, and consumers. No, you would no, sell no, it to no. a product manufacturer. No, no, company. we would team up with a professional company. Right. Right. Uh, right now we're talking, yep. with, you know, with right. um, harvesting, and right. they will take it from there. Yep. Right. So you'd be selling wholesale. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. So where would the it, would it be a, the three percent cap tax on the wholesale, and then again on the retail? Correct. Right. Does anybody know how this works? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's, just it's all in retail. It's just 3% retail. Oh. But, <laughs> yes, the 3% tax that the state allows the city and town to collect is only on retail sales. However, for any marijuana establishment, and that is a cultivator, a, a manufacturer, or a retailer, or a micro business, or a craft co op, or research facility or testing lab. Uh, f for them to operate in any community, they have to pass or, or to uh, work out a community host agreement with mm -hmm. the town. And uh, the, the statute, the law allows the community to exact up to 3% of gross sales of a marijuana establishment as part of a community impact fee. Mm -hmm. um, which is part of the community host agreement. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Well, that leads me to a question. Yeah. If, um, there's no sales, I mean, the sales tax is only on the retail portion of it. And the host agreement compensation you spoke of is something independent. But the cultivation of marijuana is not considered a farming use, correct? Mm -hmm. That's why you have so, to have a separate bylaw. So, right. so it, through, through taxation, if you have, let's say you have a two-acre greenhouse that grows perennials, regardless of the value of it, if you have the same warehouse now growing marijuana that is a $50 million business, the assessors can then s say that that greenhouse operation has a value of fifty of fifty million dollars and tax it accordingly. Mm -hmm. Would that be an incorrect statement? Well, w would they be correct in, in trying to? I, th I think that would be uh, uh, they have difficulty in, in establishing that that fifty million was the fair and reasonable value of the the fair market value of the property because they're obliged to the assessors are obliged to determine fair market value. But it's also the assessment doesn't just go on the fair market value of the property. It goes on its ability to make income. And I can give you a good example is right on the corner here mm -hmm. in town where you have a vacant lot that is assessed at, uh, say, $20,000. Mm -hmm. On the same size lot across the street where there's a bank and the bank does $10 million worth of business, that property is assessed at a $1 million. And they're both the same parcels of land. It's just one's ability to make income. It's an economic impact. And that's impact. a portion of an assessor's job. So 
you know, then that's what you get back to this greenhouse. If you spent $100,000 on the greenhouse, it could conceivably the, could be assessed at $20 million because that's the amount of revenue that was coming or the value of the uh, product being processed. Well, I, I'm not aware that assessors take potential earning capacity into account when they determine fair market value of land. My guess is that the bank is valued at a million dollars because there's a building there. Yeah. And well, this is the value of the building. By its ability. I'm just, it's also by the its ability. Well, in, in a hard. sense, they also check if you're getting sure. rents from an apartment building, exactly. they check on what right. the income, so it's past sure. experience more than what right. it might make, but Not what it has made over sure. the, Yeah, that's yeah. what he's saying. That's what so, and that's, that's like probably a new area that we'll be getting into yeah. uh, mm -hmm. with this mm -hmm. issue. Possibly. Is this relative to this? Yes. Yep. Um, Trevor and I at the MMA conference a couple of weeks ago um, visited the Board of Assessors, you know, professional board meeting, and they were talking But it also depends if it's a corporation, if it's incorporated as a corporation, or if it's incorporated as partners, and, it, and all that's going to be planned into the decision, and mm -hmm. the assessor's professional group will make a determination. It's part of, um, you know, once the, once the Cannabis Commission starts um, issuing licenses and all that kind of stuff this summer, all these things will get sorted out for us as towns um, yeah. by the assessors groups and you know there's all kinds of other regulations that are still up in the air. All right, thanks. Area. So I want to um, ask is there any, so when we look at special permits it's for the benefits outweigh the, the detriments. What what would be the downside of cultivation in, uh, in our agricultural area? Does anybody have any? With you know based on based on all the security and all these issues that we're all concerned about, but I think these are mostly addressed in this, so I just want to... Well, I can tell you that um, another community in, in the area, uh, so some people on the, on, the, on the planning board sent out uh, like a questionnaire to the 14 towns in Massachusetts that have medical dispensaries, and they wrote to the mayor or the town manager or the selectman or the police chief and board of health and such, and said, what's been the problems in your towns from having a medical uh, dispensary? And the only negative comment they got was related to odor. Somebody complained that a cultivation facility was exuding an odor. It was not, not everybody found pleasant. But that's the worst thing I've heard, is odor. And I might say that the reports from other legal states, that we just don't see any reports that the sky is falling in Colorado or Oregon or Washington or Nevada or California. You know. That's a very interesting thing is that I'm going to have to, I'm extremely naive in this area, but does marijuana not being burned have a distinct odor? Yes. So if there are people noticing this from a dispensary, what happens if you have two acres of it all concentrated? Do the people inside this, if, let's assume it's inside, do they have to wear special apparatus to breathe so they don't oh, no. come high? No, but, but there are odor and attenuation techniques and, and technologies that, that are pretty so, routine. But then if you have, it's something that we should, I guess, think about. If you have exhaust fans from this, the neighbors from 300 feet, would they be affected by it? I, I have no clue. That's exactly the sort of thing you would, would question in a special permit discussion. And we have some information. If you want people on TV to hear, you got to come up with a mic. Trevor McDaniel, Selectman, Board of Health, Deerfield. Um, if you go online and do, you know, I've been studying a lot of this issue recently, and um, if you go online, there's a lot of uh, YouTube videos of, well, just for instance, um, in Canada, uh, they, they have medical marijuana. They just had one company, Hostel, take over another company, so it's now a billion-dollar producer of of medical marijuana, they do a YouTube video of their facility and the security that's involved and the apparatus, the hair nets, the, you know, every door is locked, you've got to go through and pass code, everything that goes in is all very sterile and there's no outside air that can come in there. Everything needs to be, you know, hermetically sealed. So I, I'm not sure, 
um, that you'll get. I mean, maybe that's an old plant or something, but I don't think you'll be getting a smell outside of that because they, they're not allowed to let any other air out or any air in. It's all recycled. It's a really high tech, really high tech operation. So um, I can send the link to anyone who's interested, wants to take a tour of a, you know, modern, you know, modern marijuana facility, a grower and producer. And again, they must just ship off and then somebody else manufactures for medical marijuana and s sending them out. So I don't think odor is going to be a huge, huge issue. So you say this is a multi, multi-million dollar industry. Billion. Billion. Billions. Wow. Best I heard of is eight what billion in the US. What would you compare that industry to? Um, Tobacco, maybe? For example, okay. yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Football. I've got a question for the audience. Uh, obviously, you're representing pioneer growers, and I'm just wondering. Kip made it sound like it's going to be in a building or something, and so this is the people that are proposing to growing it. Are you proposing to grow in a building or out in an open field? The greenhouse. They're they're proposing to maintain the greenhouse. Okay. No one asked that question. I just wondered. Anybody else uh, that's gonna thinking about growing it? How are they gonna? Is it gonna be in greenhouse, open field, building? Thank you. So I maybe just come back to you, Max. So the, the, you said you were against it. I'm just what, what are the detriments? I'm trying to still get well, at some well, of that. with the security concerns. You know, you put up a perimeter fence. You've got 24-hour uh, cameras. 24-hour cameras need 24-hour lights. You know, you have a deer run into your perimeter, you got police, police cars in the middle of the night, you know, with a false alarm. It's just a lot of activity in a residential agricultural area where, you know, if you live next to an agricultural field, they're going to come out during the day and they're going to do their tractor work and they're going to do their spraying and the harvesting and it's all going to be during the day. There's no nighttime activities. And this is going to be a 24-7 thing. Security is going to be 24-7. You know, there's a lot of opportunities for nighttime activity. Well, that's certainly the kinds of things that are normally in a special permit is when noise can come out of there and how well, much light can come out of there. It's not so. when. It's when there's a false alarm, the police are activated. When there's, you know, a rabbit trips a, trips a sensor mm -hmm. or a deer runs into a, you know, enclosure. Somebody's curious how good the security is, you know, <laughs> things like that. You know, I think by nature, I think the farming industry sometimes has, you know, interruptions with uh, the residents. Either a tractor makes noise or a cow is out, you know, you know these, <laughs> if there is a business, there is, there is activity. Yeah. And if there is activity, you know, uh, then things happen but I don't think it's uh, I think it can easily be overcome in terms of the, the, the security or the, the impact on neighbors thanks all right we're gonna hear from some other folks um, yep I just wanted to say I think I think the mitigating that is part of the cost of operation I think anybody getting into this business would uh, say I'm gonna do a double fence on the outside or whatever you know whatever it takes it, particularly if it is a multi-million dollar operation part of the cost of the book of, of business, I would assume. And it, I, mean, I would also assume that could be written into the regulations or the, the bylaw or the, uh, or the special permit to say we require that you do this. If you can't afford to do that, you can't be in this business. Okay. Anybody else have comments? Yep. Yeah, my name is Jaap Molenaar. Uh, uh, co-owner of Pioneer Gardens and I would I want to just put a little bit of a perspective historically on this farmers have always grown different things you know Deerfield has gone through its own waves you know we had um, cattle here and then we went to broom corn and all these things I'm a sixth generation farmer you know and we had farms in uh, close to Amsterdam well, Amsterdam is now Amsterdam as big as it is now but we used to have quite a big farm there they grew tulips, well first they started with vegetables, commodity crops, then it became tulips and flowers. And if you look at myself here, well, you know, going back to Deerfield actually, you know, 
there were a lot of commodity crops like even, you know, um, grain crops. Well, people actually used to ferment that stuff and get high on that. You know, that was a normal crop. You know, and that's the same now here too. We have here now a new crop, but farmers have gone through these cycles. So we employ 40 people year round. We're giving them three weeks of vacation to start with. There's a couple that have six weeks. That's a lot of benefit. So we are basically on the top of the pay scale because we respect our people. They're not seasonal. But how do we keep them employed with this down pressure on prices and all those things? Now, in securities, it's all legitimate reading of questions. They should be solved. But they can be solved. Because why would I risk my product being sold? Now, the other perspective or the other, you know, relative, you know, kind of making it a little bit more realistic. We're talking about plants growing in the greenhouse. They're probably going to be this big. You really have to steal a truckload <laughs> for it to be worth it. So which young kid of 17 or, or you know, whoever that might be is going to actually do that with all that security? It's a product that still needs manufacturing. Mm -hmm. It's in the beginning stages. It's like growing again, you know, a, a, a wheat or barley for Berkshire Brewery that still needs to become its final product. So what we are doing is certainly needs, um, you know, um, security, but how much? A lot to make sure nothing happens. But let's put it also in perspective that we're, we're not having, you know, straight out heroin kind of thing there. That's not what this is. This is a regular herb plant that has in eventually a value. So it's not, you know, so I, I just want to put that historic perspective on it. Growers are growing things. This is just another crop. It can be secured. You know, so that's my take on it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Hello, my name is Chris Bichat. Um, and my vices have always fallen along more traditional lines, gluttony and craft beer. Uh, I'm, I'm a pot prude. I, I've never imbibed anything. I've never, uh, never smoked, never eaten anything. Um, and I plan to keep it that way. And as a, an employer and a parent, I wish this would go away, <laughs> but it's not. I, I agree with Carolyn. I think that we should uh, orchestrate our response. Uh, I, I definitely like the idea of uh, having uh, controlled environments, preferably indoors for me, um, uh, and versus a retail. Like, so I, I, I love the idea of just a single retail outlet if that's the minimum that we have to do. Um, but I think that there's a lot of angst that I have about this. Like I said, I wish it would go away, but I think that there's a lot of positive here too, and we've got to kind of learn to live with it. And uh, uh, so I, I think we need to steer it in the right direction, make it work for us, and make it have uh, as little negative impact as we possibly can. That's all I can. Thanks. Thank you. So I'm Aaron, and what, what we'd like to do by the end of this meeting is give our town council some instruction to put, put together some draft bylaws or Or potential warrant articles, I guess. Um, so right now, I'm I'm hearing. I think you tell me if I'm wrong, but I'd like to uh, propose that you put together a draft bylaw for <coughs> cultivation and processing in residential agriculture zones in Deerfield, as well as the last time we talked about um, leaving, uh, also having a special permit in the industrial and the planned industrial zones, and then having a um, and then keeping a no in the center. Residential Village, C1, C2, and the EPD district. Is that um This is just me, for John, what are you what are your plans? I mean they're talking about having one retail establishment. No, I'm, I'm sticking to cult I'm sorry, this is cultivation just processing. Cultivation. We're gonna do one at a time. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to give start to give some direction to our council to put together some bylaws because otherwise it's here a long time. And we have uh, our our uh, health, are you still something? <laughs> <laughs> He's sucking on it. <laughs>
Help us out. Verify oh. what you are. Doing. I, I'm still up red. I, I just want to point out one little item that kind of slid over. Oh, yes. Just introduce yourself quickly, please. Dick Kalaszewski, former building commissioner, present health agent. Thank you. Okay. I want. I just want to point out one little thing. I need to ask Adam a question, which I failed to do earlier. Yep. The first question is, I was going to ask Adam, if we do nothing, can somebody pop into town with a store, okay? Not a retail store, a vaping store. I am adamantly opposed to, forget about the retail sales, forget about the growing. I'm adamantly opposed to someone coming into town and having a vaping store where people go in and smoke this and walk out the no, uh, walk out the door just like a bar room type atmosphere. So, I would like to have you consider that as part of the retail scenario, because people are going to be able to buy it in another town. They're going to be able to grow it in another town. We just don't need them showing up here, opening up a vaping store, and it's not covered in our bylaw. Mm -hmm. So right, mm -hmm. right now, what would that, where would that fit in our uses? It would fit anywhere that you do retail. Because it's, it's, re it's not. Just like a hairdresser. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. That, that was our intention, is to allow no social so consumption that, established. That's what I wanted to point out to a okay. ask Adam. And vaping is different than marijuana, no, right? No, no, smoking no. marijuana. This is a store smoking. for smoking marijuana. Okay, I wasn't clear on that. They, that call, it, they call them vaping, vaping stores. stores. But you can vape, you can vape non drug related things, I believe. This is, this is, you go in there and smoke the marijuana. So you bring yeah. your own product, Dick, or you, can you buy bring, the product yes, from the store? You can bring your own product and pay to go in and whatever, or you can buy it there. This is what I don't right. want to so see. Yeah, Adam's going to elaborate. Adam's gonna I, I'm, Thank you. It's just my opinion. Sure. So, so that, that so sort of a facility is referred to as a social consumption facility mm -hmm. under the regulations. That's the terminology they use. Thanks, right. Right. And so you can refer to it as a cafe. There's different terminology that's mm -hmm. used, casual or, or, or regulatory, but right. yes. It's a, it's a subcategory of retail sales. Can, can I, um, I mean, I, I, I thought I was on the right track here, but the, the, the cultivation and processing, we're getting somewhere on that, I think? I, I had a question about cultivation um, and processing? Cul yeah, cultivation and processing for your own consumption. Well, you're allowed six plants. Well, I'm, right. is it allowed in a residential? Uh, I'm just anywhere. 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 Okay. So somebody wants to grow it and process it. Yep. Yep. But for Can I ask Adam? For your own consumption. For your own consumption. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Not opposed to that. It's just Adam. Okay. Someone who wants to make money on it. When it comes to uh, cultivation and processing, can you? Permit can a township permit cultivation and processing and restrict the um, the, the retail establishments? Is uh, that possible to do? And restrict, yes. Prohibit altogether, no. And so let me. Let well, me I guess I should have used the word prohibit. Yeah, no, um, not to less than twenty percent, which is the reference you heard before with respect to retail. To, to, to clarify a point that I made earlier, and, and Attorney Evans was correct in, in uh, catching me because I think I, I misspoke or I wasn't clear in distinguishing between what the regulations allow and what I had drafted back 12 or 15 months ago. At the time, I drafted what was called the Marijuana Cultivation and Processing Facility Bylaw. I used the terms cultivation and processing, and I gave them a definition consistent with what was then the statute, but the regulations had not yet been promulgated. And I included in that definition terminology that would include manufacturing right. and preparation. There's a distinction between preparation, manufacturing, and processing. He is correct in stating that uh, cultivation and processing go hand in hand. Manufacture, preparation of the actual product is a separate a separate use or can be a separate use if you choose to designate it as such. It's defined as a separate use in the, the newly adopted regulations. Right. At the last meeting, I was, my understanding was that the processing meant making the edibles Me on too. site. That's how I took it. Me too. Oh, yeah. That's manufacture. Yep. yep. Right. So Preparation that, or manufacture, different from cultivation and processing. I think that's we had structured it to be all one and the same in the bylaw, so I'll take the blame for the confusion. 
because right. 12 or 15 months ago, <laughs> that's what we were doing. Right. Yeah. But now that the regulations exist. Target. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Yep. So there's, um, there's another comment, uh, John. All right. Yep. Quickly. So my understanding is that um, Pioneer Gardens or the local farm would grow the plants and then uh, harvest and it would be shipped off. So it would be like growing digitalis to then send to a pharmaceutical company to make heart medicine or it'd be that same sort of thing where it's or grain to the brain. Right. Yes. right. Or grain that then is shipped that's off more. to the group up and we go, yay. Okay. So <laughs> so that's right. okay. Yep. Or, or like perennials. Or like perennials, yes. It's right. Or like perennials, yeah. Right. Yes. But, but or or yeah. Right. Well. Growing puppies and then oh never mind. <laughs> To the, to the forest. Uh, <laughs> so we go to them asking that that's a cultivation and processing now that we know the definition. Right, cultivation. Let's just stick with that. It's good. And, and we talked about not having any kind of um, acreage because it's, it's not like you need lots of acres because you don't in greenhouses. So just, just to get rid of that. Not kind necessarily, of though. It doesn't have to be in a greenhouse. No, I know, but it, but they to put a size of acre, the number of acres on that item isn't really necessary. It's just the line item is the the use would be cultivation and processing of marijuana, and then the, the zoning would be special permits in a couple of these places. So we'll say you could do this in our residential agricultural areas, and so you choose to do it, and you want to put up a acre building or whatever size building it would be allowed special permit you'd have right to. but that I mean if you went in and you, you, the you could do the it. rest of our zoning by yes yeah we have a lot of the zoning bylaws as you know why would you not want to put a acreage restriction I, I didn't I didn't understand why you need to you would need to he I felt that there wouldn't be a need to grow that many acres of it mm -hmm. that's what I guess if you say it has to be five acres you're only asking for huge ones no, that's for sure. The USDA um, definition for agricultural is five acres as a farm. Right. But, but since we're not talking about farms now, yeah. with that, that acreage but just, thing doesn't just matter. Remember, this was done. No, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm just yeah. moving so forward here. I think but the five acres today. does no, here today. come into play, though, still, right? No. No, because it's not a farming activity. Okay, so then you could put it on an acre plot. Yeah, then. that's okay. what we're saying. Uh, well, so that, here's what the, I, I, yeah, I. I've been involved in this for months and months and months doing research for the selectmen and stuff. The reason the five acres was put down there, to eliminate people that's from what a one acre parcel in the event that they could do multiple grows that's what I, to, to eliminate some, well, I have 1.1 acres at my house, residential agricultural. I don't want to be able to turn that into a pot farm in the middle of a residential area. I don't think that's right. I think it's okay. the five acres was put in there specifically to review that there'd be plenty of surroundings around for security purposes and lack of disturbance to neighbors. And isn't that taken care of in the special permit, I guess I would well, think. And in the regulations. But if you have a one acre more buffer lot, against, Pat's got something to add to. If my next door neighbor on his one acre wants it to be the one to apply and he gets it, I don't want him there 10 feet from my boundary line. No, so not in your backyard. You're saying one person, but but they were saying that's only re refers to the retail, not to the cultivation. No, I'm talking, talking about cultivation. No, cultivation. cultivation. Yeah, we're not giving restrictions. That's not what our job oh, is. Is that right? I thought you were restricting Yeah, our job isn't to restrict numbers. Yeah. Okay. Pat's Thank you. Okay. I have some clarification. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, in regard to uh, Mr. Kalashevsky's concerns, which are important that yeah. the neighbors are going to be concerned about exactly. these industrial right. facilities so exactly. close to them, I think more pertinent than addressing in limiting the size of the parcel itself would be to look at the buffers and the setbacks right. yeah. and to set them at a higher standard potentially right. for a, a cultivation facility for marijuana than you do in your dimensional tables for just any uh, activity where you might have a setback only of, on a side setback you might have 10 feet which would you, you could end up then with a 20 you could be on a five acre parcel right. and still be 20 feet from your house if you haven't set the right. buffers. I think the buffers and the setbacks are the real key point that you might want to be addressing and looking 
to uh, deal with those. Which might functionally the actually, point, to the point of it being a larger parcel, we want it to be on. So that functionally, it may end up being something like that, but be more specific to the. Right. Activity. That's what really more gets, to our, I think, to you concerns. to controlling and regulating that specific concern more so than just looking at the overall yep, yep, parcel yep, and yep, not yep. addressing that. Fair yep. enough. Thank you. John. Uh, Adam, I, I, I keep coming back to this. If it's not farming, what is it? <laughs> Has the state said it's a commercial venture? No. Um, the state allows municipalities to qualify it however they choose. Um, the, the term that was used was not farming, it was agriculture. And there was a question about whether um, where it is the cultivation of a crop, whether it qualifies as quote unquote agriculture, which has a, a important meaning under Massachusetts general laws, of course, subjecting it to the protections of chapter 48, section three, making it essentially zoning exempt if it's on a certain size parcel, et cetera. Right. And so that question existed at first when the legislation was adopted. And subsequently, there was a clarification that no, indeed, it's not. And there was a, uh, an amendment that specifically said, no, it's not agriculture. Therefore, it doesn't qualify for all those various exemptions. And it can be regulated through the zoning process the same, that it, same way that any other use could be. So it's not agriculture. What is it? <laughs> I keep coming back to this. And I guess it, it makes me think more Perfume. by being on this board is if the town creates an area and allows this to happen, and I, I'm not going to pick a spot. But all of a sudden, they're growing, they're growing marijuana and harvesting. The neighbor comes along and says, I want to manufacture septic tanks there. Well, you can't do that. That's not allowed in this area. It's like, well, it's a, it's a commercial business, no different than growing the marijuana is. It's not agriculture, but yet we're allowing a commercial venture in an agricultural area. So now are you discriminating against this other person because they want to have something different? I don't know. Well, I, I, can, I can give you the practical answer, and then I can give you the legal answer to that problem. Okay. <laughs> so practically, I understand the conundrum yeah. here. It, 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 it you know, looks like a duck, cracks like a duck, it's a duck. Yeah. Um, you see this commercial operation, this marijuana cultivation facility, and well, why can't I have another commercial operation in the same district? We get these questions often with solar facilities. You've got a solar mm -hmm. facility on a property. The property next door says, well, I want to I want to uh, manufacture widgets. Why can't I manufacture widgets? I've got a solar farm next to me. They're, they're producing electricity. That's a commercial industrial venture. Why can't I do it? Well, the answer is, legally, Solar energy systems are exempt under Chapter 48, Section 3. You can't outright prohibit them. And so even though they look like a duck and quack like a duck, it's not really a duck under state law. Well, the same thing with, with, with marijuana establishment. These marijuana establishments are now protected by virtue of the legislature, the people having spoken, and then subsequently the legislature having spoken and amended the, so the legislation it. saying that okay. these sorts of facilities have to be allowed. Okay. So you couldn't, you couldn't manufacture septic systems next door if that's not allowed use in the district because septic systems don't have special legislation that say they're legitimate anywhere. Gotcha. Thank you. So I would, because we also break our, our uh, zoning bylaws into four different areas, residential, uh, community facilities, Commercial industrial, so I would put this under commercial, I guess. And under commercial, we do have a couple special permitted activities in residential agricultural areas already. Landscaping business, for example. Well, shouldn't we That's a create special. another separate area, not commercial? Because if we put it into commercial heading, now we're admitting it's commercial. And that would only strengthen the, the septic guy's argument. So shouldn't we create, I mean, it wouldn't be that big of a deal if we created a separate area for it. I don't know. You mean category like different kid? category, yeah. Sure. Uh, Pat, you're our, our zoning bylaws for for medical marijuana. We we did a separate district, but um, for yeah, this, that was an overlay to, district. Should we try to fit this under commercial industrial or someplace or create I, a whole I another? I think um, the communities that are distinguishing between the types of establishments, as as Adam has described, are putting the various types of establishments in the appropriate category. So, so retail establishments we're under about, business, we're about cultivation process, manufacturing yeah. under, yeah. Okay. So, so I, I think even though it is Someone's for purposes of 40A section three, not considered exempt as an agricultural, exactly. a lot of towns still considered as an agricultural activity and might list it in that section of their bylaw. In the end, I don't think it's really gonna matter. You might decide you prefer to have it in the commercial section and it, and it could equally apply to those establishments. Well, right now, we don't, we don't have a title called agriculture. It's called commercial. That's, 
Hmm. We have agriculture under community facilities. Extensive yeah. uses it's, it's in, in commercial that first community facilities it's, section. It's, so I, it's, it's, a, it's a drafting question. It's, it's a bit of form over substance, but yeah. I understand the, uh, I understand yeah. the issue. I, just, I, I will say that okay. Attorney Evans, before I stepped in here today, handed me a document to consider. And okay. what he's done is he's essentially taken the Montague form, yep. and if the board saw fit to adopt it, has crafted a version of it for Deerfield. And so he's done exactly what you suggested, which is he's broken out extensive uses in community facilities, he's got two entries, greenhouse for marijuana cultivation and outdoor marijuana cultivation. Then when he gets to the retail sales, he's put that under section C commercial. He's got retail sales, storefront, delivery, social consumption, and then testing. And then under industrial, he has things like indoor marijuana cultivation, project, uh, product manufacture, transport, research. Those are industrial uses. So he's separated them out in that fashion, um, which is in keeping with the Montague model because that's how they've done it. Yeah. But it's really, it's really your choice. Here's a copy of the Monty one if anybody wants to see it. All right. Priscilla sent us a copy. So do you have enough direction, you think, at this point? Uh, I, on I the do. cultivation and processing? Oh, I do, yes, okay. on, on that topic, yes. <laughs> so now, okay, comment? So what someone mentioned here, um, section 40A3, agricultural use exempted. So we, in Deerfield, um, agricultural use is by right in all our zones. And, and, what was, and that's partly why they're saying this is not agriculture, so it's not just by right. But that's just to let you know that right now, agriculture is permitted by right in, throughout any place, industrial so you, parks, every place. So, right. so you can grow Agricultural use, I, yes. you, you know. I just wonder whether there, it had a different... Yeah, we're, uh, we're not definition. talking about tobacco, so we didn't study up on that one tonight. But, uh, <laughs> Cucumbers. Because I thought they're kind of along the same lines, and maybe that would No, no, different. All right, so uh, how about, so now we got the other two classifications, is product uh, manufacturing and then retail sales. Does anybody want to take up either of these tonight? <coughs> I, think, I think we should. Because, again, we're trying to back up because we need to vote on this at a town meeting. Um, I don't have the April. calendar there. End of April. And then we have to have a public hearing prior to that, um, and we need to have at Something least two weeks to notice prior to a public hearing. Correct. John, Correct. you said that we have to do it at a town meeting. I think South Hadley is actually going to make a ballot vote of uh, what they do. Yeah, they're doing the referendum, and they're doing a ballot initiative. So I'd almost think we'd follow suit with that. I think more people will partake in it if it's a ballot vote yes. than town meeting vote. And who's putting that forward? The planning board or is that the select board? Planning board. Planning board. I believe it was planning board. It's in too South important Hadley. to be board can put that voted on by a show of hands and having one person decide if that's, you know, how many hands went on. I, I didn't understand that. But well, it's, it's too important of an issue to be decided on a show of hands at a town, at meeting. A town, meeting. town meeting. Right. And right, right. Yeah, that can be swayed, push it back. That can be, yeah, there's so day. much gray in that kind of Right, so, process. but the, the question is, Max, how does that, how do we proceed with that? Is that our, our initiative? Do, you, do we take that? Do we make that step? I think, the, I think it was South Hadley, the planning board. Uh, Michael Fisher told us about yeah, it when yeah. he was here last time. Right, well, he there was an article was in the that. paper. I should have maybe cut it out. <laughs> okay, so this is our second meeting on this, and the public comment seems overwhelming that cultivation and processing uh -huh. and residential agriculture, I'm not seeing the, the issue here. So it's are you talking cultivation because and processing, or are you talking about manufacturing, or are you talking about retail? Because I think a lot of what we're talking about is retail, and we're kind of no, the, mixing it's, it. That's what I'm hearing. The whole ball of wax. It's the whole ball of wax, but I believe it's just about growing facilities. Well, unfortunately, it's all, South it's all melted together. Everything's right. melted together. You, I asked Adam, you can't segregate the grow from the manufacturing from the well, no, yeah, zoning yeah, no, wise no. you can but you can't say yeah, you can. we'll allow grow but we won't allow yeah it's definitely separate. yeah but in the state size it's not it's either do, do you understand what I'm saying Adam? I, I'm, I'm not sure that I do in terms of a prohibition so I I, I, I think there's some confusion as to the the basis for a referendum vote 
Um, and and I, I was just asking, you know, what the what South Hadley is doing because I'm not familiar with the process that's underway there. It sounds like they're maybe pursuing multiple avenues, as had been suggested before, are. as an alternative. So, to the extent they're going to a referendum vote, I imagine the sole purpose of the referendum <coughs> is the question of whether or not the use should be prohibited, because that can only be accomplished via a referendum in a community that voted yes on question four. These other sorts of questions, the adoption of a zoning bylaw, that's by town meeting by statute. Yeah. Referendum vote doesn't doesn't substitute for a town meeting. You can always go to a referendum vote for a non-binding sense of the of, of the, the, the the public sentiment, but it's only town meeting that can take action to actually adopt the bylaw. So if we're going the route of a bylaw, something like the Montague model, um, tailored to, to Deerfield's wants and needs, you would need to go to town meeting and you need to follow the usual zoning adoption processes, public hearing before the planning board, recommendation to town meeting, et cetera, um, that you would for any other zoning bylaw. If you wanted to pair that with a question of a prohibition, then you could certainly put a, a separate article on the warrant for prohibition, which would need to go hand in hand with a referendum vote. Um, th there are some challenges, and they're probably a bit too extensive to get into tonight uh, on the floor of our, of our meeting, but there are some challenges going the route of multiple alternatives. I understand it's like three candidates on the ballot and you choose the one you like the best, but you know, for example, I'll give you one, um, this concept of a moratorium. Let's put a moratorium on. That'll be the first one. If it passes, we don't need to get to two and three. Mm -hmm. Two and three would be an outright prohibition or a zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. The moratorium um, passes. Well, now you try to justify the moratorium on the basis that your planning effort wasn't complete, and yet it was complete enough for you to put two different articles on the, on, on the warrant <laughs> showing that you had studied the issue and were prepared to adopt zoning. So uh, th there are some challenges, and that's not the only challenge. There are some challenges that exist with this. You know, you, you have your choice, uh, uh, a la carte approach to, <laughs> to, to addressing um, recreational marijuana. But it can be done. I think that's probably what, what's being done in, in, uh, in Hadley. They're giving them different options. And can you do a, um, a bylaw for cultivation and then a moratorium on sales because you want more time to, to consider that? Because we, we haven't started our discussion. public hearings and discussions about that, so we don't have anything prepared for that. So I, I, I hesitate to say no, you can't, um, mm -hmm. because I think the same sort of analysis would be applied, whether there's a planning effort underway. Yeah. I don't know of any town that has done that as of yet. Um, towns have either, they've, they've approached it on a, on a, on a you know, full-scale wholesale basis. They've looked at everything from start to finish and either zoned for it or sought a moratorium. So I guess what, what I'm hearing in Deerfield, I think we're a particular maybe town because we have a, a, a very great history of farming here. And I think that's where this has been at for the past 15 months or whatever is that we, we were hoping that our professional agriculture people could, this could be available to them and, and not have to wait too long. And so I think that's, that's kind of why I was wanting to separate this is try to get it doesn't seem like there's been any, you know, someone who voices some potential detrimental aspects to it, but I haven't been convinced that there's that many. So why couldn't we do one and then hold off on the others, I guess, if that's what the town wants. And again, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you you can't, and, and you're the policymakers, not me. What I, what I will say is that I'm not sure that the Commonwealth, that the state would see you as being, you know, quite as unique as you describe, only because many municipalities are saying, sure, we welcome the cultivators. Because the, what, what they perceive, what the public perceives as the ancillary impact from these sorts of facilities are impacts associated with the true dispensaries, the retail shops. And that was the case back with medical as well. They didn't want the dispensaries with the line out the door, but they didn't care if there's some nondescript building in the corner of town that nobody knows what's going on inside mm. that happens to be cultivating marijuana that you can't see, you can't smell. Mm. That's not a problem. So we've had many communities that will welcome with open arms the growers, but they don't want anything to do with the retail sales. So. And the product management, uh, product manufacturing. That's a whole other. That's a whole. And other we haven't topic. even met those people. We don't even, you know, we don't know what that looks like. That's that's an interesting. To me, that's part of the mystery of this. That. But just to clarify, the, pro the product manufacturer, they wouldn't sell it. It still has to go to the sales. Totally sell. agreed. So I get that. Product manufacturing is in a building, saying, in a, probably a nondescript building somewhere. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying and, this is a, and that's a new. That's Conagra. But totally different, you know. But with well, naturally, naturally grown. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, well, say it. Yes. So, I, as has been mentioned, there are public hearings coming up in the next couple of weeks with questions for the Cannabis Control Commission. Yep. And one of the questions that we have, and I'd be interested in Adam's take on this, is that it says that um, the the uh, ballot referendum is required for the prohibit prohibition of the operation of one or more types of marijuana establishments. So one of our questions to the Cannabis Commission is if you were to allow some but not all 
of the mm -hmm. now long list mm -hmm. of marijuana establishments, would you still have to go through the ballot election process? In, in our opinion, and this might go to your question, Mr. Bronis, which was, you know, is it, does the state see it as all or nothing? Right. That, and, and I, I maybe guess that's, that's what your question is. How to is rephrase answered. it. I mean, to opt out is to opt out all or nothing. And, and, and not if the answer to yes is if it's yes. And, and most communities have taken that approach. It's been all or nothing. Um, I, don't, I don't see any prohibition in the statute that would prevent you from um, piecemeal opting out, but you would require that referendum vote for any right. aspect for which you, w you wish to opt out. Right. So you couldn't say, we're going to allow these cultivation and processing facilities, but since we're allowing those, we're not going to allow the retail sales, and we can get away with that without going to the, to the ballot. You got to go to the ballot because you're restricting the retail facilities altogether. So that's consistent with yeah. the interpretation yeah. you've heard. Adam, I have a question. So if our intention is to do the, tw you know, you can limit it to 20% of your liquor licenses. So if we had one retail outlet, we can not um, license the social um, consumption establishment, right? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Once you, meet the, once you meet the minimum. Okay. Right. I just want to make sure that that was absolutely true. That was our intention. We don't want any social consumption right. on premises use and then walk out the door and get in the car. And that, that's, been, that's been a question because it was unclear no, in the statute. I think the regulations, sure. and I'll reread them again, but well, I'm fairly certain that we they were, clarify. When we were in Boston, that was, it was clear that if you did the 20% and you allowed the one retail, you, you, they said you could get away with the social consumption. But I just wanted to verify because that. that was the clarification I believe that was offered, and again, I'll reread them in the regulations. And you were in Boston just two weeks ago, which was right. after the regulations were released, and so you were getting the most updated right. information. That was that was what we the workshop was at the um, MMA conference, yeah. right? It was packed. I mean, because everyone had the same questions. Right. So that would inoculate us against the any kind of other that, uh, that was why intrusion we were, of another. We were going to use the, our current overlay district and uh, allow the retail in the one retail license in the current overlay the current overlay and therefore you know it's away from schools and you know general walking and sociability of our so that would be p and i p and p and i a what that would be in industrial zone. and planned industrial yeah yeah planned industrial and planned it's, it's the over marijuana. We have already have a marijuana. Right. right. He's, he's clarifying the, what it is. It's an industrial. But that's in the P and the PI uh, right. 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 districts. Yeah. Right. And as, as uh, our DDIC uh, friend mentioned earlier, that maybe the land industrial, once they get into it, they can't actually do it there. Well, it, right now, they're prohibited in that area anyway because of um, the 500-foot buffer, which we would not change. Um, from the nursery school there is within 500 feet of the industrial park. So the, the industrial park. Kind of. Okay, but we can't say it's, that we're saying you can do it there and then we're saying you can't do it there at the same time? Well, That's not at, very fair. At the moment, fair. there's a nursery school there. If they move, then they could do it. To be an issue. Yeah. yeah, but there's parts of it that are more than 500 feet away now, yes. Carolyn. Yeah. So. We were looking at the disability. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so um, we need to make, um, make some progress here. <laughs> and uh, um, Julie. I had a question on the manufacturing and the, the second step. Product manufacturing. Product manufacturing. manufacturing. Where is that um, zoned in other towns? Do, Do you know, know Adam? Is it well, I think it's just it's just started. You know, I mean. Right. right. So, so we don't do have we have any example? Have I guess the question is: Are there any examples of that? Yeah. That's what I don't get. So, I can't give you examples of communities that have already zoned for it because I don't know of any communities that have already zoned for it. Every community is in the same position. The regulations are just a few weeks old, right. so every community is in a hurry to try to get this done at their annual town meeting in 2018. I can tell you that, in the few discussions that I've had with other municipalities about the types of uses, they've talked about. Um, allowing the manufacturing in those locations that manufacturing facilities are typically permitted in. So more commercial or industrial districts as opposed to residential districts. But again, it's, it's, a, it, it's a judgment call. And again, it's in the regulations, proposed regulations, there's all the security and all the rest of it, and it's not sold out of there, and it's got a lot of security, and I just want to highlight the fact that 
it's, I haven't heard anybody say it's a danger to any person or town, so I'm, I'm really confused about the detrimental effects of, of cultivation and product development, product manufacturing. I right? just really having a hard time, and no one's been able to tell me. Well, I keep asking you, you have well, quite well, it. So. addiction. Addicts. But it's that sale. That's when you buy it, and then you use But it doesn't it. matter. I mean, it's, it's, it's the last thing our society needs thing. is another mind-altering substance. Right. That's yeah. <laughs> we can't handle alcohol. No. We, we, we have an <laughs> opioid epidemic. Now we're right, going to throw this go. on the pile. Well, no, let's take care of our opioid but, epidemic. Let's put some resources into that. No, no, I'm like just everybody saying, would be this, the, at this juncture, this, the last thing the, our society needs is another uh, distraction. Or, uh, well, some, some of us might argue that this would be a very good thing for society. If it was so, medical, yes. Toothpaste and tube. And then it is being sent for to be made into product. The, Whatever. The product. The, those you just said. It's for medicinal purposes. And so I think mean, people understanding that are going to, once they can wrap their mind back around it, they, they won't be so um, frightened and scared. And if they've seen. Uh, we have a dispensary in Northampton. If they've seen or, or worked with people who have MS or have lupus, you know, um, have a uh, line uh, that is, you know, <laughs> No. But this isn't for this. This isn't medical. medical. Medical was so yesterday. A lot of people so still buy it. Yeah, yeah, but that's, once this grown, goes through, medical's is, done. That's. It's being grown to be shipped away from manufacturing. To give it to somebody else. Yeah. And I think that, you know, now, yes, when you're talking about bait shops and all that kind of stuff, that's, that's a different, different thing. That's why we're talking about, you know, possibly tabling or getting more information that that's growing, but when it's, um, I don't know, like, right. like I said, we, we, we grow so many things um, that, that, have, that have other uses that they, they are, are changed into, and, and um, I don't know. Right, just <laughs> so for a little bit of history how this happened. worked. <laughs> They temper them with the medical, get everybody used to it, and then come in with the recreational. So the business plan is working perfectly for the marijuana industry. Um, so, so now we go off topic. So thank you, Julie. Is um, a grower, a cultivator, required to sell it to be manufactured in the town limits of Deerfield? No. 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 The, the cultivators sell to the to the manufacturer. Yeah. No, they could sell it wherever they. I mean, a town does, yeah. isn't required to have cultivation, manufacturing, and retail no. in the same town. Like, well, it's not a closed system. It's not. No, we have to not, have that available for the same. You don't need to manufacture a product from grow to, to right. on the shelf in the same community. Right. That's correct. But you need to zone for all all, all, all types uses. of uses, right. or prohibit them. But prohibition requires the the, the referendum. The referendum. Yep. Mm. But because even if we zone for manufacturing, it isn't necessarily going to happen here. We don't necessarily have the the location. We don't necessarily have the all that in place. That's that's what we're talking about. So I'm hearing there's some discussion about this opt, opt out thing. Would anybody like to talk more about how that would happen? talk about what needs to be done for that? I think Adam sort of described it to a certain degree. It's going to be a process that eventually go to town meeting vote to... No. Well, I think it's valid. And that would be, when's the close, right. the next time to do that would be November? Does it have to be a... Um, Not town meeting, I meant like a ballot okay. vote, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Can it be a special election? It can. It, it can, can be a special yeah. election. So it could go in our May, on our town election? Whatever your town correct. election is. Town May. elections. May. When we vote, when we vote for, for the... Planning board members. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I think two of us are probably up this time. Yeah, if anybody would like to get on the planning board. <laughs> <laughs> are you up this time? I forget. I don't know. Actually. 
I think Max is, yeah. Um, and Max, Rachel, are yeah. you up? Yes, so three of us. So do we want to move? Uh, I'm running all the time. Just for the record, South Hadley Wait. voted, select board put on a warrant article uh, to, at a town meeting. They voted to put a ban on the election, which will happen in April. They also passed bylaws. The planning board moved some bylaws forward, so they have a backup plan. That's what I, yeah. So that you're not left high and dry. Right, so there's your yeah. options, yep. Roger, just, just like that. So, so that in other words, they, they may be, maybe <coughs> they don't want manufacturing, they don't want the retail, but they want the cultivating, so. No. Yeah, no, they voted to put the question as to whether the town wishes to ban it on election ballot, which is what you'd have to do if you approved it, which this town did and many did. And they also, that came from the select board to the, they have a representative town meeting that voted to put it on the ballot. So that was on the ballot. But also at town meeting, the plan, through the planning boards submitting uh, zoning articles, they did do zoning. All right. Which would fall into place if the ban fails. Did they have that meeting already, Wendy? They didn't have the election vote, but th that's what happened at the, a, a special town, town meeting. meeting, I that's think. That's the one that happened that we were. And so that means that they have two, two candidates on their ballot. They, they took the moratorium off the ballot. Mm -hmm. So, And that, that's the kind of planning, I think, that we're talking about and that Adam is pointing us towards. But Could it's you, up to the select board well, here what, whether to put it on a ballot. Okay. So that because yeah, it takes that, two things. So the first thing would be the legislative body. In this case, is select board. That right. So so the, the opt out requires the select, select board. board to take that action. That's correct. And then the voters, uh, they have to place it on the ballot. So does the planning board want to like make a recommendation or something? That's I, I did think it wasn't just us to, that could put it on the ballot. So we can't. We, we need to ask the. Uh, so you so if you got was it forty registered voters or whatever it is to put an article on. Uh, I'm going to say town meeting, and but on a ballot question, mm -hmm. they could petition the selectman, and that could happen, right? Yeah. Well, the selectman could do it without well, that. Well, right, right. I'm just saying that's not the only option. Okay. So is that where we want to go? We want to see if the select board wants to put it on the ballot for opt out, and then we have, if that doesn't pass, then we have a zoning bylaw that, that could we be voted on. That's my then. choice. We craft something. I agree with John. I think we still need to craft something. Right. No and I agree what. with you because. Yeah, no, right. yeah. Speaking just for myself as a selectman, I'm not interested in opting out. So let's, um, I'll lay that out right now. I would love for the planning board to do your work to get your zoning bylaws uh, orchestrated mm -hmm. so we can be proactive and have um, all of our ducks in a row so nobody comes into this community and sets up shop without having any rules in place. Um, we're able to collect tax if it does pass. I mean, we'd have a company come in and set up shop with us doing nothing and we couldn't even collect the tax on it yet we'd still have to have our police enforcing it so just speaking for myself I'm not speaking for any other selectmen I'm not in favor of opting out so I'd love uh, I'm I'd love a little for you confused to on this so you're saying taxed and it you mean what is the tax on the cultivation I didn't know catch no that. I'm talking retail so retail still trucking along along with your cultivation discussion retail still coming and that's really what the people want to do I mean obviously our farmers want to do this and I support them wholeheartedly they need a crop they can sell um, so I'd love them to get I'd love them to sell uh, I mean grow and produce and sell on to a manufacturer um, medical and retail marijuana and I'd also love to have our town have the bylaws in place in case a retail comes in and if we've done nothing Town meeting is showing up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. If we've done nothing in that time frame, and as of June or so, or April, May, they can start issuing license to CCC, we're out of luck for at least a year, unless we have another special town meeting. But we have a meeting coming up. Can we talk about opting out and having the zoning? Right. Yeah. So yeah. let's. So I, I think we're all in agreement on that one. So that, let's. Yeah. Well, we'll recommend well, to this. Thank you. So thank the you. planning board no. can recommend to the select board that they put the opt out on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't pass, then we have the bylaw prepared. I, I the think that's that. mm -hmm. sound. That's I think good that's reasoning. Sound. Right. But so let's get to the bylaws then. Is that what you're going to get to? Well, I was going to ask a couple of questions, and maybe it wasn't to the bylaws. Well, we're the planning board ones right. that take charge of the but bylaws here. And everybody's in favor of supporting the farmers. I am too. Uh, there's some local farmers here. If they 
came next to my house and started growing the crops they grow, I would not have an issue with it one at one at all. But if someone of them came up and wanted to rent some land or do it next to me, I think anybody in this room would have an issue with it. And Max brought up the concerns. And you say there's no concerns, John. I can't see how no, you no. say that. You, it's not that there's no concerns. The, 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 the issue just is the more the activity and all that kind of stuff going on. But if they were going to raise onions or potatoes or flowers next door to anybody probably in the community, there would be no issues. I think most people will have an issue with it if it pops up. And now it's not even five acres. It's an acre parcel. Well, we're talking about the, uh, the setbacks. That was right. Well, that could limit that. some of it, yes. Right. So we need to get started. Yeah, but that's not going to limit all of them unless you make them like a mile wide or long or whatever the setbacks, and you're not going to do that. That'd be unrealistic. Uh, so, and, and then everybody's talking about helping the farmers out to sell it. I think Max asked some of the guys, farmers, where they're going to sell it, and they couldn't come up with a place that they're going to sell their product. And most people that produce or manufacture a product, they sort of want to know where it's going to go. And Adam said there's nobody nowhere in the Commonwealth that's even processing it right now. So would I grow a product or would you grow a product and not have a place to go with it? I don't think many people do that. All right, thank you. So, but worried about the bylaws and yeah, the zoning. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. We're not trying to help them with their market and yeah, stuff I like know. that. That's their business, yeah. so, yeah. All right. So. Oh boy. Uh, I have one yep. question to ask Adam. Yep. In our present bylaw in our industrial zone for medical marijuana, I want to make sure that if someone opened a medical marijuana store there, can they go back to the zoning board at a later date and add retail sales because they're already selling the marijuana product? Is that possible for somebody to get a zoning board? Variants at that point. The way our bylaws are written, I think they're a little vague. Not quite. I think that's why, why do you say they're not definitive? Well, I think the CCC is. Let's go into it says medical marijuana sales. Marijuana is the product, the sales is medical. Somebody wants to add retail. Um, what what would be wrong with that? Well, if they're, one is non-profit and the other is for profit, right? No, no, no. They're they all changed for profit. They're all it's all for profit. profit. So, so, so there, there, are, there are different licensing schemes. Um, so when the, when the medical marijuana legislation was passed a few years ago under the oversight of the Department of Public Health, there's an entire scheme that's presently in place with respect to those facilities, a licensing process. That process um, is going to be subsumed within the Cannabis Control Commission process effective December 31st, 2018, the end of this calendar year. So essentially the CCC will have full control over whatever the DPH currently has control of. Um, I think that the long-term goal here is obviously to unite this concept of medical and recreational such that it's under a single, single oversight. Um, facilities that are currently licensed and in operation as RMDs, registered mar marijuana dispensaries, can convert to recreational facilities. So the answer to your question is yes, that can occur no. if they're currently licensed. Okay. But the. Yes. Could that potentially make it two sites then at that point? Let's say that Single say site. somebody comes in and does and gets that one license to be a recreational one and then you have you have a, a you know a drug you know a medical, medical marijuana then they can add automatically apply and get the license for the other then that would create two wouldn't it or is that single true? single facility single they have facility. to track things separately but they are allowed under the regulations to do them in a single facility no, that's right. not, i don't believe that's, that's, that's not that's not what, what I'm paul asking. says is that our current bylaws allow medical marijuana in this parcel okay so can their medical marijuana then somebody comes along and they want to sell recreation here so they're the one recreation can this medical now convert to medical and recreation so now you have two recreations side by side no the, the the idea is if you've got if you've got a facility that is in existence operational with a license that facility can convert from a registered marijuana dispensary rmd licensed yeah. under the current yeah. scheme that facility is can it? convert to a recreational facility so they have the but, first option 
But we don't have any. Not, not, not in operation. Never mind. But but the fact that properties are zoned for medical marijuana use that has no effect on the on, on the new I rezoning see. that's being proposed. I want to point out in my research with other and there's people here that have done the same research. The medical marijuana is in a decline when the recreational goes into effect in other states. So basically, most of the medical marijuana will disappear and be overtaken by recreational for several reasons. So. This is what I'm concerned about. So many towns are actually getting rid of the medical marijuana overlay districts, right? Is there any reason not to do that? There are communities that are placing everything under a single umbrella. Right. Right. Whether you choose to do it in the form of an overlay, you choose to eliminate the overlay altogether and allow it in certain existing zoning districts, that's a discretionary question for all of you. But it can, it, that can be done. So I'm suggesting, because we spent a year on this two years ago, is that we make this, um, so for cultivation and um, processing, we do the residential mm -hmm. agriculture. And then for the product manufacturing and for the sales, we leave the district that we already created in. Is there any reason why we couldn't put the cultivation processing and include that in the industrial areas as well? I mean, why only the residential agriculture? It, it, it also, <laughs> yeah, sorry. This is what we discussed last time, right. R A I and P I. Yeah. Right, and then for the yeah. manufacturer, it's to Justin hedge I and P I. Right, and this is yeah. all to hedge our bets in case the opt out. Well, right. Uh, well, that's a good question because obviously, I heard, well, we were supposed to speak on this a long time ago that there was a proposal that was going to be allowed, miracle, uh, marijuana was going to be allowed to be grown in residential agricultural areas. And we never, as a planning board, had a discussion on it. Because it came, came to us uh, within the month before. That was last year. Mm. Yes. It came to us with two proposals. There was one about height distance, and there was another well, about they came right under the line. We'd had no, we couldn't open it to a public uh, meeting or anything. I remember at one point in time we had a meeting, and Dick was supposed to come and make a presentation about this. And I guess I, I'm thankful for our selectmen to think ahead about making these regulations so somebody couldn't just come in and just set up shop. Right. But I think they should have talked with us about what zone it should have been in. Because personally, I don't think it should be in agricultural, residential, in area. I just don't feel it fits there. So, but we're, we're faced with that. And that's my idea. I don't think it belongs in that zone. Plain and simple. But we never had it, really had any discussion on it. It's just a, a proposal the selectmen came to us for, with it. For cultivation, or are you talking about something else? Cultivation. Okay, so last month we spent an hour and a half on it. Tonight we'll spend two and a half hours. Right, I know, but so prior to that, we never had a discussion on it, That's John. That's fine. Well, that's that, fine. if you feel it's fine, good. Well, no, it's the past, Roger. And we're, we're going to have another yeah, public right. hearing on it in, in a couple weeks. So this, I think we're given a lot of okay. opportunity. And it doesn't mean that we can't look at it doing... No, no, I know that, Rachel, but that's what I'm saying. I think we should look at another zone. I don't think it should be agricultural residential. I'm just speaking my... It's my opinion. You started by saying you supported farmers cultivating it, and now you're saying... No, I never, I never right did, John. By two minutes ago. No, I said he supported he farmers. farmers. He supported uh, farmers. farmers. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I thought you said you supported farmers doing this. Okay. All right. And uh, manufacturer, PPD. Mm-hmm. Industrial and plant industry, mm -hmm. not EPD. Yeah, EPD <coughs> for manufacturer. Oh yeah. Oh mm -hmm. okay. That's the uh, old Oxford site. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. the Gridola, you mean? So, is is the EPD within the existing medical marijuana overlay? No. no. no, no I understand. Understand. That would be for manufacturer. Yeah. Okay. So, but but I thought I heard uh, the chairman say a moment ago that the manufacturing and the retail would be allowed in the existing overlay. Right, which is, anyway. which is industrial and planned industrial, which is industrial south, um, right. southern portion of the industrial district located south of Elm Street and bordering the railroad to the east, Route 5 to the west. Right. So, and the so what, what you're proposing is that the manufacturer and retail facilities would be located in either the existing medical marijuana overlay or the EPD. Right. 
Retail and manufacture, aren't those segregated as well? Yes. Retail, manufacture. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct. So I would say manufacture, EPD. But not retail. Not, in re not, 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 re not retail. Retail is just the overlay. Yes. Yes, just the correct. Overlay. Did the I mean, that's my select board have any discussion on this? We put a lot of effort into the overlay district initially, mm -hmm. and so that was where we decided that, I mean, we didn't vote, but there was consensus that the retail outlet, our 20% limit was one, and our one would be limited to the current overlay district right. um, that was already supported by the town, and whether we had a medical that wanted to convert to retail, and, and it is clear, as Adam had said, um, that the Cannabis Commission is absorbing DPH's medical and that right. it seems very trending that, in fact, it all merges and, and, and the medical actually goes away. So, yep. whatever. We're just, we just want to protect the town and this seem like the most reasonable way to do it. One thing that I haven't really heard clearly is the size of a grow facility, not maybe what's proposed in Deerfield, but you know, statewide or even countrywide. Does anyone have an idea of what's an average square footage of a grow, a grow facility? There's four tiers, the, the you know, uh, up to a thousand, a thousand to five thousand. In the tier four, the biggest is um, over ten thousand. And you say a thousand, thousand square feet? Canopy. Yeah, they okay. define it as square, square feet, feet canopy. I'm not sure anybody has a specific feet. canopy. Uh, <laughs> scare, scare, um, square feet square of feet. grow under canopy. So if one should think about the largest area being 10,000 square foot building, it's not really that large. I mean, our bylaws allow in the, in the most business districts up to 10,000 square feet anyways. So I, I, I wonder why is this limited to an agricultural area if it's not really that big. Well, that's why I, yeah. we're adding the other zones. Yeah, so Mr. Like Chairman. An acre, 10,000 square feet to quarter of an acre. I mean, just to the yeah. We have some. I, we've uh, been doing some research on the nature of these cultivation and processing facilities to begin to get a handle on this question, and we've been downloading images and so forth. And I think 10,000 square feet would be considered small. This is 10,000 and up. We typically see um, structures, facilities that are 20,000, 50,000 square feet. There's a there's a huge million square foot mega thing that's planned in eastern Massachusetts. So these are large industrial scale facilities. I think we have to keep that in our mind. Even even the greenhouses, when you see the pictures of what people are building as new greenhouses, it's not what you think of, you know, just a greenhouse growing flowers, honestly. It's done on a larger scale as part of the economies of scale, I think, of the industry itself. And, so. and, and even, even the medical uh, marijuana treatment centers were of a similar scale. Uh, we had a few proposals in a couple of communities. Often they, they start small. They've got to build these facilities, the indoor facilities, to be um, in keeping with the regulation. So they have this modern technology that prevents uh, you know, air from outdoors entering the facility and provides for that sterile environment. And so when they invest that sort of cost, often they're not going to utilize the full building at the start. So we had facilities that came in, we signed host community agreements for you know, 60, 75,000 square foot facilities that were starting out at only 30,000 square foot under canopy, so to speak, for purposes of the actual cultivation with an understanding that over a course of a, a five to 10 year period or less, if business was good, they'd expand into the, the full, the full uh, area that they were, had built up. Okay, so if this is not agriculture and we have square foot requirements in town and commercial area, how does this all blend together the you know the, the size requirements versus being non agricultural but being done in an agricultural area well how do you how do you limit the size now you're, you're talking fifty seventy thousand hundred thousand foot square foot buildings and even in our regular bylaws John what do we allow like 
10,000 square feet. 10,000 10, yeah. and C2. Mm -hmm. So the special permit again, 5324, neighborhood character and social structures, adequacy of utilities, traffic flow. I mean, these all come up on the special permit. So by putting some setbacks and things like that and then looking at our, you know, what we have in the special permit, you certainly can start to, you know, where they're permissible. That's how you, that's how you take care of that. Now, if somebody utilizes current agricultural buildings to do such a thing, do they have to come back uh, to go through site plan review? Or do they just opt, you know, automatically? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. I mean, you know, there's the individuals yeah. that have greenhouses now, and if our setback is, say, 300 feet, do they have to move their greenhouse? Right, there's a lot of components to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just keeps getting deeper and deeper. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of empty dairy farms. You want to come up to uh, uh, Mike? Just gonna say the answer to John's yeah. question is uh, yes. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what the question was now. <laughs> uh, I have a suggestion, though. And that is that you entertain the chair entertain a motion to, to request counsel to draft a warrant article that does the following, that repeals the medical marijuana provisions in the existing bylaw, that authorizes uh, cultivation, marijuana cultivation operations in those three districts you described, that limits retail um, operations to one in the existing overlay district. That would be the uh, essence of the motion. I well, think that I, summarizes it. I kind of liked it, except if you've just repealed the medical, then, you, then it doesn't exist anymore, so you can't say Well, you have, you have to reestablish re uh, that area, but I think yes. That, so it's either convert, convert this into the all marijuana or somehow, and is it, is it, I'm still not sure, is it a use in the table or should it be its own section? If you're going to have your own um, setbacks and things, it seems like it should be its, its own, own section. section. So, so we're, we're going to have to take a closer look at this now okay. that we have a sense as to what the board would like in terms of uh, the division of uses, yeah. where those uses will be permitted. Um, as you say, with any zoning change, there you, know, you change one thing and it affects five other things in the bylaw yeah, yeah, that you, yeah. you have to be mindful of yeah. how the dimensional requirements are going to apply to this particular use. Um, as you say, you can't eliminate entirely the overlay district, which you'd be doing if you eliminated the provisions of the bylaw that created yeah. the overlay district, yeah. if you intend to use it. Um, you also have to be mindful that in your table of use regulations, the overlay district isn't listed as a column because it's an overlay district. Mm -hmm. right. So you can't simply go in under manufacturing and say it's going to be allowed in the EPD and the overlay because there's no column for overlay. Right. So we're going to have to look at the logistics of you know, how we fit this into the bylaw. It'll be a little challenging, but we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. Excuse me, I remembered your question uh, uh, about uh, converting one to the other. One of the other requirements for getting a license to operate any marijuana establishment under the new law is that the applicant has got to demonstrate that what he proposes to do is compliant with local zoning. And so it's not real clear how that's going to be done. But uh, certainly if, if uh, you have a bylaw that requires marijuana cultivation to be in this district, then, then the applicant is going to come to you and 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 seek some either come to you or to the town or to the, to the selectman or somewhere to obtain a confirmation that the proposed operation is conformance with local law, which gives you a lot more. Say well, in the the, matter. Uh, yeah, I get where, you, but I don't think you really understood what I was getting at. Okay, farmers, they get special privileges as they should. They're exempt from many different things. Um, so say the farmer is going to utilize greenhouses that he put up as agricultural greenhouses, they were exempt from many uh, state and local uh, rules and regulations. Now that it's not going to be a farming facility anymore, do they need to go back and follow the rules like a regular commercial endeavor. Yes, marijuana cultivation does not enjoy the agricultural exemption anymore yeah. as a result of the, the change that was made to the statute last December. Which is true. You, you raise a more complicated question than that, which is what do you do about existing buildings yes, that's that were zoning exactly exempt now being repurposed for a non-zoning exempt use? That question hasn't been posed yet. I can tell you that it was. Th there, there's an interesting case 
involving the, the old courthouse in Cambridge. Change of use, if you will. Yeah. Which, was, which was a protected use. It was a federal courthouse, so it was a, a zoning exempt use, and there's been an effort of late to convert it to uh, a mixed use structure, um, multi million dollar mixed use structure. And the question was, did it enjoy the status of a pre existing non conforming structure? And the courts determined, indeed, to many people's surprise, that it did, even though it wasn't truly pre existing non conforming because it wasn't lawful when constructed in the sense that it didn't meet zoning then, it was just exempt from zoning. The court said it didn't matter. So my sense is that that would be allowed through the process of modifying a pre-existing non-conforming structure, changing the use within the structure. Well, appropriate. I, I, I would almost disagree with you because that's a lot different than an old federal courthouse. It's a, it's a zoning exempt use that's being converted. Mm -hmm. So the other question we have is um, who would be the special permitting authority? And according to our special permitting guidelines, it says unless specifically designated otherwise, the Board of Appeals, that would be the Zoning Board of Appeals, shall act as the special permit granting authority. So there's a proposal that we would make the Board of, the board of Selectmen the special permitting granting authority or the planning board. Or a separate board. That was or a, a separate board. That which, was one suggestion of Adam's. I don't know if that's a logistically makes a lot of anybody sense. Anybody have any comments about that? Well, a new board I, I wouldn't agree with because that would just be more, most likely an appointed board. Mm -hmm. So. Appointed um, from different elected boards. So. I do not think that the select board should be the special permitting board. I think they have uh, a bias towards this already. It should be the the regular board that does the special permits uh, now. The zoning zoning board ZBA ZBA. Last month there was some talk about the planning board. Um, Trevor has his. Oh, sorry. This, uh, again, I may have a bias to this because the select board is the executive board of the town and is elected as such. And um, I think we're qualified to make that decision. And we are also the board of health. And we have been in, really spent a lot of time on this one. So it should be. I feel, uh, and we no, we, we got any other board just, than the select board. I think it should be an elected, elected body. Well, if it could be elected, yes. No, um, no, but I mean, not a sp another board, but I think it should be an elected existing board. Which the select board is. Yeah, I know they're elected. And, and the, planning the planning board, board is, is too. The, the ZBA zoning is not. Board, not. Yeah. And that's at the whim of the selectmen. It's a point, they're appointed by the selectmen. Right. But and use their language to appropriate. Okay. But he's saying, he's saying the zoning board is not elected. That's what he's saying. Right. They're appointed by the selectmen. They're not good. That's irrelevant. It's, uh, it's the fact they're not elected is what he's saying. <laughs> yeah. So what are we recommending to the draft? This can be. This is going to be discussed at the public hearing, but we want to put something forward. Right. Um, so, what do we want to put forward? Comment. Um, to me. I tip towards the planning board because there's seven voices versus three, and I think you represent the town in a wider range than perhaps the, the three select board do. Thank you for that. One of the things I like about the select board is is more, I think they get more attention. Um, we, we often don't get many people at our meetings. I'm not sure if the select board does necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's maybe that's an issue we all have to deal with. Um, and then, as Carolyn did mention, the board of health. Um, not that this is necessarily a health issue, but um, the zoning part of it isn't. I don't think. Um, so, um, and we do have experience with all the special permitting we do. That's basically basically special permitting. You look at all the same things you do for a site plan. You know, look at how it impacts the neighborhood and traffic and all those other things. So we have more experience with that. Um, it would give us more work, but maybe I'm up for time to get off here next year. So. Oh. <laughs> it would be a charge, a quick charge, and then it would be over more or less. Yeah, it would be one big site plan review, and then that would be done. So should we uh, recommend that the draft that goes to the public hearing be the, say that the planning board is the be proposed as the uh, special permit granting authority? Yes. 
Yes. yes. All right. Planning board. Yeah. And then if you could, um, the setbacks, how do we want to do that? You, could you uh, so maybe just see what's going on with other towns or? Uh, is that covered in the CCC's uh, regulations? Uh, there. Not in a zoning sense. So okay. I, I, think, um, I think we're going to have to look closely at what your zoning provides and then compare it to what's permissible in these districts. Um, and that can be challenging with respect to a something other than a traditional residential use in a residential district. Right. So, um, so we'll take a clo close look. But that that sort of raises another question, and I'm mindful of the of the timeline here. Yeah. But the the concept of um, sort of starting with a clean slate, which is more or less what we're doing here, because we're scrapping to some degree what was proposed 12 to 15 months ago. I understand why we're we're talking about something far more comprehensive now. But for the first time, for you to have your eyes on that being at a public hearing um, before there's any further opportunity to review it, right. at least in the first instance, I would almost suggest that the board schedule another meeting between now and the public hearing based upon the schedule that was provided. I think we've got some flexibility to do that, at which time I can come back, hopefully in advance of that meeting, get you at least a draft of what has come of today's meeting. We can further fine tune it so that the document that we're advertising for the public hearing is at least a bit closer to what you might actually recommend right. to town meeting. Um, looking at the dates, town meeting warrant finalized by the selectmen March 30th. Sound right? So we've got we've got seven weeks. Um, there's certainly enough time for there to be a meeting to review it and to still thereafter conduct a public hearing, even if we needed to put a placeholder on the on the uh, the warrant. Um, until such time as you had the final language. I think there's enough time to do it. There's not a ton of wiggle room here, but. It makes sense though, because at, at some point we're, we'll start mashing things together at a, at a meeting that's more public. And if we can bring something a little bit more achieved. It's, it's also we're, incumbent we're, upon the town to provide to the public uh, the draft of what is going something to be that discussed at that public closer hearing. closer to what when we want. You, published legal notice mm -hmm. so you really need to have looked at it and voted for it yeah. to be available to them as well as for your own review there, there can obviously be changes at the public hearing but I have a concern when the when you're gonna you know got half the bylaw at the public meeting uh, the public hearing as to whether or not what you're then proposing for town meeting is still within the four corners of right. what you noticed and too, too many too many challenges so Adam can you have for lack of knowledge a, a, a moving uh, setback rule in other words if you say a grow facility has to be a minimum of a hundred feet from a property line but in no instance closer than 200 feet to an existing home can you do that type where it really has two it could have two different setback rules uh, you can measure setbacks from things other than property boundaries like nearest residences that's often what's done for example in the context of um, what they call fall zones or clear zones for wind turbines. They mm -hmm. often measure them from the nearest habitable structure. Um, there are some challenges that exist there um, in terms of how that gets structured and whether practically there are opportunities available for the type of development that you're uh, seeking to allow. Um, requires a more in-depth analysis on a parcel-by-parcel -parcel basis of these districts if you're going to impose stringent requirements as setbacks from nearby habitable structures, for example. But it can be done. Wouldn't that restrict the use of the neighbor's land in that mm -hmm. they couldn't put a, a building that would, re, uh, the, the, the siting of the grow facility would limit what would put stricter uh, restrictions on a neighbor's use of their own property? Yeah. Well, certainly that couldn't be done through zoning. So that's been dealt with two different ways. And again, I'll give you the example of the wind turbine context. context. Mm -hmm. um, one way is that the bylaw could require that the uh, proponent of the facility have some degree of control over the area. Um, that's not unreasonable for something like a wind turbine. You're talking about a multi-million dollar project, although I guess these are too, <laughs> uh, where the proponent would need to literally almost purchase an easement over a budding property if they mm -hmm. couldn't locate the turbine centrally mm -hmm. enough on their property to provide for an adequate clear area. Mm -hmm. The other option is simply to recognize the reality that you're only, you're only zoning from what's in existence at the time of the bylaw. So if it's a 200 foot setback from the nearest habitable structure, and then after you authorize or permit the project, the neighbor elects to place a new structure within that 200 feet, but on his or her property, fully compliant with zoning, that's at their own risk. They can't then complain sure. that they can smell the marijuana being cultivated because they're only 100 feet away when they opted to put that structure up after the fact. So why it, it, sounds, it sounds like what I think Kip was saying is that there's a certain setback and then 
uh, just on the case that there's that there's a property, a, a building closer, then they, they, they increase the distance. So you have that, at least that minimum setback, whatever whatever it is, right? Yeah, so that can be structured. There need to be objective standards. There are some communities in Massachusetts that provide for standard setbacks and then allow those setbacks to be varied by way of special permit in unique circumstances. But you can certainly provide, you, you can't provide for an arbitrary standard. Um, that gives you full discretion to determine setbacks on a case-by-case -case basis as needed. Um, but you can provide for you know, either or, depending upon location of structures or improvements on adjacent mm -hmm. property. Sure. All right. So um, is that what, what do people think? Do you think we need another meeting, or do we, you we think we've got enough information that they can write up a good uh, draft bylaw? So what, where, what are we question. proposing? I don't think well, that's the question. Well, our first is... We want the op we want to give the voters the option to opt out. Correct? So so we're gonna we're gonna I don't know how to officially do that. We want to request the select board to consider putting an opt out referendum on the town ballot. Right. That's all we can and do. Carolyn, we can force it. We can. Carolyn them already to said she it. wasn't going to do that. So no. All uh, all we can do is request that they do right. That. So what are our other options when they don't put it on the ballot? Well, public zoning ballot. No no no. There's other ways to get it on the ballot. I think that. <laughs> well, <laughs> with, with 40 votes, it doesn't matter what you So you don't want to get the, the, the oh, people boy. Yeah. unless you get it your way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. They, they all right, know right, what they were right. voting stop, on. Stop, stop. We have some people that want to talk. So I do have a concern about the opt-out. Um, my question is, what was the percentage of people that voted yes for marijuana and those who percent, uh, said no? I mean, was it that close that... Are going to change their mind or does anybody here know? I, I think I it was like 60, 55. Yeah, it, was, it was roughly 55 45. Right, 55 45. So, and there's a lot more information. A lot of people didn't realize what they were voting for. Or what is I did. Or, 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 or they, okay, all right. The, the question was the percentage. <laughs> well, you were smart. No, but I just think is it a time of our resource, a waste of our resources and our time and our money to put into a vote if people are really tip the scales for? So that now becomes an issue for the select board because they're the ones that decide whether to put it on the ballot or not. All we're doing is asking them to consider it. Right. Yep. And isn't opting out then not supporting our local farmers? Which no. What no, that's what I was going to ask. Is, is it separate? Is the opt out on everything? There are lots is of yes. it's out there's out a lot of it. Apparently, it will be on every yeah. local farmer. Yeah. 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 It's, it's going to be all or nothing. Binary. Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be, but that's how most communities have pursued it. It's it's challenging to. I mean, if we decided tonight we wanted to uh, to go with the cultivating, but we weren't sure about the rest of it. I mean, could that be separated? It can't be. You need to zone for the rest of it. Still have to zone. Uh, it, uh, we got it. We got it. We got it. Yep. There's the one one comment that I want to make about people that are considering opting out. First of all, it's against the majority vote. Second, if it's truly because you think it's a, or you consider it an, an addictive substance, would you rather have selling? The, 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 the guy that's selling it now, you know, pushing it, we call them gangs, we call them criminals, whatever they are, or at least control. That's what we're doing with liquor stores after the prohibition. So just consider that before you put it on the That's just my only... Right, the illegals are already starting to lace the stuff with PCP. Exactly, so that's going on right now. Back, so. Really? It's not proven that. Uh, yeah, it's hard to prove anything in this case. Then comment the facts that that's truly the case. Yeah. How we documented that that's truly... But okay, you know, this is a comment. So do you have enough for... For the bylaw? Uh, I, I think I do. Let me reiterate what I think I'm doing so that there's no confusion. <laughs> That's what I was hoping to <laughs> So we, what I haven't heard directly, although I'm getting the sense because we've been making reference to it, is that we're going the route of something that is in a more Montague-like fashion as opposed to what was before the board 12 or 15 months ago, something that distinguishes between cultivation slash processing and manufacture slash preparation and retail, um, each of those being individual, each of those being allowed in different locations, cultivation processing in the RA, 
uh, the I and the PI by special permit, manufacturing and the overlay and the EPD by special permit, retail and the overlay only by special permit. Um, the planning board is going to be designated as a special permit granting authority. I'm going to take a close look at the interaction between the various sections of the bylaw, um, how we modify but not entirely eliminate the medical marijuana overlay district since we need to preserve the district itself, but essentially supplant the concept of marijuana, uh, medical marijuana permitting with the concept of marijuana establishment permitting. I'm going to take a closer look at the uh, various setbacks and other dimensional requirements to see how they apply here, particularly to a non-traditional uh, non-residential use in the RA district. Uh, and I'm going to see what I can do to try to make the appropriate modifications. What's likely going to result from all that is some sort of a self-contained section of the bylaw that is going to replace the medical marijuana overlay district right. while preserving the overlay district itself um, and providing for all these standards. So it'll, it'll actually look a bit like the version from 12 or 15 months ago, a self-contained yeah. section. Yep. Um, but it's going to be more expansive than that, and it's going to provide for yep. everything that I just described. That an okay synopsis? Subject to more discussion and more review. <laughs> yeah. I think that's why we need another meeting. I agree. Because if we don't have another meeting, then... Well, that, then uh, what you just said is going to be what we're going to see at the public hearing. So no, 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 no. I, no. I no, we need to have So you want another meeting? That's what I asked. Like, do you want I'm another meeting? Saying, yes. I'm just saying oh. that, that if you wait till the public hearing, you're, you've defeated his, his suggestion. For, for what it's worth, yeah. my recommendation is that I think you need another meeting to yeah, fine tune this. I defer to you, but I, I ask. So people are now saying yes. Thanks. I recognize it's a burden. That's my question. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. So if you could do that, how long do you think? In two? Should be a couple of weeks. In two, two weeks? weeks. So we want to plan another meeting in. Um, Sure. No, it's just going to be just a planning board meeting, not an open meeting, right? Correct. Correct. Just a planning board meeting. Anybody so can that come. We know, yeah. With yeah. a public comment. Oh yeah, yeah. public sure. comment. I mean, it's not a right. Before we present it to the public. Do you want to wait? Do you want to do it on a Monday, or do you want to do it on the week of the 19th or 23rd? Can't do it on the 19th. Or the holiday. That Can week. We do it the 20th. That's a Tuesday. 20th. Sure. 20th. Well, Adam, give you enough time if we do it on. And that's a Tuesday. 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 And what time? Seven. <laughs> Seven, six, I mean. seven, six better for you or either. Two twenty. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Yeah. So seven o'clock. Is it your birthday? No, not much. All day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring cake. February twentieth, seven o'clock. We Carrot will. Um, this will be the main agenda item, and if there is an A and R or something, we can put that on the agenda too. But otherwise, this will be the main topic. So I will do my best to get something to you um, somewhat in advance of that meeting. Right. It is a quick turn. And then just looking at the calendar, when when is it likely the public yeah, hearing should be? Yeah, I'll redo the calendar based on that so you guys can see how that will, will play out. As Adam said, we have we have a little bit of uh, we need at least two weeks here, but not a lot. So we'll see how that works So we're looking out. at mid-March for a public hearing kind of thing or something? Well, it would take that long to do your 14-day notice. That's what I'm saying. All the pre yeah. Right. All right. And in the meantime, I would suggest that if people want to attend a select board meeting. Um, I would suggest that all of you, if you want to be the oversight board, um, the Cannabis Commission meeting is tomorrow, 10 to 1. 10 to 1. It's all <coughs> tomorrow, yep. so it's yep. I believe I gave you the schedule, so if you can't make it tomorrow, there are multiple meetings across the state over the course of the next couple of weeks, so there are multiple. Go to Hyannis tomorrow, too. Yeah, you can yeah. go to the beach. <laughs> this is the next good. Worcester, yeah, polar, this one in Polar. Uh, Worcester on the 7th. Polar Plunge. And um, Boston on the 8th. Right. It's an aggressive schedule. Any other, uh, anything else before the board tonight? No business, no other items? Annual report, Paul? we got to write an annual report? Yeah, we're going to try any other business not reasonably anticipated? We've already set the meeting for February 20th. Does anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Make so he, to he's going to make a draft something to make a opt out, right? Yes. No. The select board that makes it. I know, but he's going to. No, no, he's no, 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 no. We, he has nothing to do with that. I know, but we have nothing to do just, with that. Just listen, John, for a second. 
he's going to draft it, we have to present it to the selectmen. No. We're not going to even do that? No. I don't think so. It's not the way it works. It says that the legislative body is the one that decides. And, uh, right. And they, well, they right. can decide, but you could do it by petition. You could, yeah. Yes. But the, the board... board uh, won't do that if Roger you want to take I know we have to get 40 signatures right, or whatever I'll, it is right, so we're right. not even going to I'll help you we're not going to do that but he needs to draft it so it's in the right language I don't know Mark. we're having another meeting prior to this okay yeah. uh, I hear you yeah anyways I made a motion to adjourn uh, I move that we adjourn uh, thank you I triple dog dare it okay. all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. Abstain against? Yeah. Imagine that. No, who seconded it?